In case you're wondering why I was staring awkwardly at the screen, some technical issues are plaguing me and my machine. Oh, wow. I'm going to start rhyming. This could be very, very dangerous. But don't worry. I'm sure that I won't get all that far. I'm not that famous. Uh, this is... Puns. No, it's, 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 it's not going to last for long. Trust me on this. Uh, because if it does, no, I'm not going to bother trying this anymore. Uh, this is Legends of the Drowned Isles, a homebrew D&D 5th Ed campaign. Uh, I am the uh, host and DM. I am Mark the Encaffeinated One. Um, for th the, uh, the immediate future, you may be actually finding us in a number of places. Hopefully you're tuned in perhaps on the Twitch on uh, Sunday afternoon to 3 o'clock Atlantic time. Or you might be uh, catching us on YouTube.com slash ENCAF1. Look for the Legends of the Drowned Isles or LOTDI The Great Confusion playlists. Uh, or you might be finding us through the Crucible Gaming Network, which just began uh, this past week, cruciblegaming.ca. So uh, eager to, to see uh, how that works out. But for the moment being, uh, let us uh, hear from our players, starting with Silas on my left. All right, my name is Pat. I play Silas Marsh, uh, cultist, entertainer, diver. Hi. <laughs> I don't know if I heard the diver part of the, of the of the the uh, the resume before. That's that's interesting. We're in the water. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. Uh, hi, uh, my name is Marie, and I play Annie, the human rogue, who doesn't quite like swimming. So this is always fun. <laughs> not not a diver, huh? Not a diver. I'm Nax, and I play Medric, half orc cleric, who is reluctantly a diver also today. They say fire and water don't mix. No. But, uh, yeah, we're a diverse group. A diverse group? Like, oh, m most of my spells don't work under here. This is great. <laughs> <laughs> well, to give you some idea of where they are, let's begin with a little recap of what happened previously. The group took some time to recover and examine what they had found. In speaking with Regalesta, they learned that when a god dies, not only is its influence, but all knowledge of his existence seems to be removed from the world, leading them to speculate that the Great Confusion reflects that. Later that night, before leaving town to return to the clan village, Silas performed some new songs, this time celebrating the efforts of a local hero, a guard captain, patterned after Captain Verendel, who, along with accomplices that seemed very similar to the party, saved the town from the storm machine. Later, they rested, with Regalester remaining with Annie and Medric at the Three Bells, and Silas returning back to the clan houses. On the way home, Silas saw that more than just water was being ejected by the massive spout in the bay. Large stones seemed to have been thrown at the town, and signs of damage and destruction followed the wake of the water. Even more signs of it were discovered by the others the next day, when a large rock crashed to the side of the three bells, and the corpse of a sea devil was found embedded in the mud of the street behind, uh, mud of the street behind the inn. They gathered by the water at the dock and made plans to investigate the water spout. Silas used a spell that caused each of them to grow gills so they could breathe underwater, and Regalesta called out to the creatures of the sea. A group of orcas came to the group's aid, swimming them quickly out to the middle of the bay, where the water spout began. Once there, they saw the source of the problem, a twisting underwater whirlwind, centered within five slanted pillars, each with a small glow over on the end or on the tip. It appeared to be some sort of building, mostly buried in the sand beneath the water, although they could just make out an opening with stairs going down into it. Around the whirlwind patrolled several sea devils, along with their larger shelled allies, mostly keeping care to stay out of the whirlwind, although one unfortunate one got too close and was whipped into the maelstrom and thrown out, presum presumably hurled toward the town. Among the sea devils was one who was very distinct and familiar to Silas, the larger four-armed one that seemed to hold some authority, and, if you'll recall, I didn't mention it last time, wore a silver trident attached to a chain around his waist. Also, one note, uh, as I was going through this, I realized we'd made a bit of a mistake in identifying one of the background characters, or 
I guess, background at this point. We had mistakenly said it was Lysandra, whom Regalesta resembled in her humanoid form, but it was, in fact, Stela, who had also had broken speech patterns and a somewhat confused aspect to her. So just to, just to remember which character was which, uh, it was Stela that uh, she resembled, yeah. whom uh, Regalesta also described uh, as a, an Aroka or a sea elf it was the form that she had taken. So we'll go right directly to the uh, map page, uh, which the characters are currently contemplating and looking over to try to understand um, where they should be. I see that my Zoom has... Not in the whirlpool or whirlwind, <laughs> whatever. The rest of Whirl you water. are all down in this lower corner here. Uh, kind of contemplating it. I'll remind you, too, that the scale of this map is doubled in size, which each square is 10 feet uh, in width. So where you are, kind of on the surface of the water, you can just barely make out, uh, mostly due to the illumination, kind of, of the magical swirl happening here uh, in this area. Uh, but you were trying to decide what could happen next. Regalesta had told you that she could feel the pull of her heart, but also knew she could not get too close, uh, that the corruption of the magic within it actually prevented her from safely entering, at least at least at the moment. Um, yeah, Silas actually does remember him having the, uh, the trident from when he saw him before. So he must have stolen that a while ago. Um, would uh, would Regalesta have noticed the trident? And is it her trident? She hasn't noticed it, but because you're familiar with that four-armed creature before, you that would be something you would have remembered. Uh, and actually, okay. Silas was the only one who'd actually seen him directly. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. But I think we had figured out that that was that he was the one that had blown up the temple. Yes, you had seen him uh, actually at the temple. Or rather, he had been seen at the temple. I forget exactly. I think it was a witness that actually told you that. Uh, Gaetano, I think. Oh, right. Because yeah. Gaetano had been thrown into a wall. Yep. Um, oh, and also currently, uh, just as a reminder, we do have Pass Without a Trace on. Uh, in an attempt to slightly dim uh, Medric's light. <laughs> yes. One of the side effects of Medric having become more more enamored or more uh, aligned with the Church of Ignis is his now uh... growing fiery aspect, which includes eyes that glow like the sun. <sighs> Maybe we could use the glow as kind of like a bait. It's like there's going to be a sea devil, and it's like, hey, there's something glowing over there. I actually see what that is, and then you kill it. It's shiny. <laughs> yeah, but I think and wait until the next one shows up. <laughs> I think they'll come in groups. Like Silas looks fancy. There's over a dozen of them there, and several large ones. In addition to their boss, I don't think we can take this group all at once. Um. No, we can't. The Regalesta, is that your harpoon with the four-armed gentleman? Gentleman. Not harpoon, sorry. Trident. Uh, she was about to correct you, but but appreciates the correction. Um, she peers, and you can see her kind of close her eyes and reach her hand out. Yes, it is near. I can sense what? it. Which is more important, your heart or the trident? Well, the trident first, then she has a weapon. She can destroy more of the bastards. And then I we will heart. die without my heart. But more importantly, many others will as well. The trident is dear to me. It is a part of me. But if I had to choose between the two, I would not choose the trident. I think we have to sneak in. I mean, we've fought some of these before, but I mean, we've had a hard time with more than just like three or four at once without others helping. If we try to take on 15 at 
at once, we're going to get murdered and nothing's going to happen. I'm guessing they can't see across the whirlpool. None of them seem to have noticed you know. just yet, but you also know that you have additional magic that's that's uh, bolstering your your hiding at the moment. And I, th I think if we try to take them down one group at a time, they're going to call out to each other. I mean, they can communicate here better than we can. They can also move here better than we can. It's yeah. either try to lure them in smaller groups and have backup need to get to us or us get to them. Either way, we'll be dealing with the entire group. Yeah. Even, right? If we try to sneak down those stairs, if we can do something about this down there, because... Like, I don't, I mean, unless maybe we can break pillars. Sorry. Well, it's that? supposed to be, it's supposed to be a pit with some stairs going down out of it. Okay. Yeah. I, I only had the stair icon, so that's kind of what it looks like, but essentially it is a pit pit in which you can see stairs. Okay. Right, if we can, I suppose if we can get in there. We get, I'm guessing, an, or I'm guessing not Anixia. That's a, it's a, from another game. Uh, Oxia has to be the one who's set this up. I mean, the the forearmed guy is a, he looks like their military commander, but he's not a, a spell he's character up. of any sort. Uh, and I, unless we can break the pillars or something, I don't see a way of breaking this machine like we did with the Stormbringer. And yeah. if we were to, can see the, the we'd have to go close to the pillars and that might be uh, unpleasant for yeah. Uh, yeah, the pillars Sorry, themselves are about uh, about uh, twenty feet in diameter. Yeah, and they stand about forty feet exposed. Although you get the impression they go deeper within the water themselves. And yes, the the whirlwind seems to just brush up against them, um, but enclosed in a couple of cases that kind of encompasses the entire inner half, uh, making it a little bit hard to to get to. As you are talking. And I just have to, sorry, I had to reload my screen to even get this to come up properly. Pardon me. Technical problems. There should be a whole Woo! song about technical problems, but I am not going to sing it. Um, <laughs> as you're watching uh, and kind of uh, uh, staying in the water, um, you hear uh, a sort of sound. It's a deep rumbling sound that has some, some um, reverberation, some tremolo in it as well. And you realize it's it's the sound of one of them speaking under the water, which carries quite uh, well. It's distorted somewhat by the, the shifting of water, but you hear it kind of echoed. It starts uh, up where you can see the, the four-armed one is, uh, and then uh, is re-carried or re-sung re uh, by others around, uh, sort of relaying the whatever command or whatever instruction it was um, to each of them. The four-armed one then starts to make his way, uh, kind of moving uh, towards the, the hole. It seems to be quite determined to get there. Well, that could be better for us. If he's down under the, the thing, he may be isolated from the others. Perfect. Maybe a few seconds later, he's gone into the hole and no longer uh, can be seen. If you intend to sleep into the hole and go down, since I cannot anyway, I could divert them. They should not be able to catch me, but I will not be able to hurt them much. Are you That's sure they can't catch up with you? I am faster, but there are more of them. Sure. Do be careful. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, yeah, if you can pull them off, and Silas will basically point off in a direction to the west or whatever, like away from the stairs, then uh, we'll try away to sneak down. Stairs, but also away from town. 
This is several, yeah. you know, like a half a mile into the bay. So there's, this isn't right next to town. It's, yeah, it's probably miles and miles. Oh, yeah. But you still don't want to bring them closer, any closer to town. Yeah. Maybe start off that way and then just move in a big circle around this spot. Um, and you, if you can forget. shove a few of them in the whirlpool as you do that, then great. But don't put yourself in too much danger. This is what I must do. And danger is unavoidable. I wish you all good luck. Should we not meet here, perhaps we will meet in the afterlife, if such a thing truly exists. And had, she sort of- We hadn't used any, uh, had any damage last session, didn't we? Nope. No, no, because no we don't help you heal though. So I had to cool. go fix mine. And we'd be level six, so you would have more hit points than last yeah. time. Cool, cool, cool. I forgot to fix mine. So, Regalesta um, sort of gives you a, a, a salute of sorts. Uh, I gave it back. <laughs> it's mostly kind of a, a, a grave and serious nod of respect. Um, still kind of seeing all of you, maybe not quite as equals, but maybe a little closer. Uh, and then she uh, takes off across the uh, edge of the water. Um moving at a speed which you find to be quite disturbingly fast. Um, when she moves, um, she seems to become almost one with the water, not having to so much move to push so much as allowing the water to push her. And you, you quickly realize as she moves that uh, she could have outpaced the orcas easily with the speed that she's achieving. Um, in mechanical terms, uh, she moves at 180 feet uh, per round in water when she's dashing uh, and begins to move first kind of circling around in a in a clockwise manner moving around the uh, the um, around the, the maelstrom keeping fair out of distance from it uh, and eventually she ends up kind of all the way around to where the uh, the hole was um, any of you who are trained in, in any sort of tactics, actually Medrick would be the one to, to sort of figure this out first. Um, she did a scouting run because yeah. she needed to know what was there and you couldn't really see what was on the far side of the, of the maelstrom from where you were. Uh, mm -hmm. but having kind of come back around to where she started or where rather they started, where she could see, she now dips down into the water and starts to make a uh, noise, uh, each of you would kind of recognize it, not dissimilar to the sound of the orcas themselves, um, kind of calling out and making a big show of herself. Um, her the orcas sound kind of... like a dog. Hey, <laughs> that. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a whale sort of barking sound, sure. Uh, dipping down into the water and, and her body kind of glows ever so slightly uh, as she begins to weave her way around uh, first this group at the very top and then sort of starts to to move them further and further uh, Actually, sorry, she would have started about here uh, and then started moving around and as she does let's have her roll her um, If I can find the right keyboard another side effect of having two machines at my disposal is <laughs> Forgetting which ones I'm actually clicking on here. We go uh, And we'll have her make her, um, okay, don't have that one, so it would be just her straight up. Um, I don't have the character sheet in front of me. Can someone tell me what uh, deception is? Charisma is normally. I'm pretty sure it's charisma. Let me check. Yep, yeah, charisma. Deception is charisma. My survival is wisdom. Okay. Just, there we go. So I'm going to make it a wisdom check in this case. She doesn't have uh, either skill, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, but with a 22. Um, Nailed it. She is able to start uh, essentially kiting them off to the other side. Uh, and I will say that because of the big display that she's making, um, she's actually attracting the attention of all the ones here. Moving, first of all. Oh, that one's pretty close to the whirlpool. 
oh. that was that was that was GM's fault. Uh, you know, <laughs> Butterfinger uh, McGee here trying to grab them, <laughs> um, and the others start to move off in that direction. Um, as you move a little closer, and she seems to be spinning, kind of moving into that uh, north west. These are relative coordinates. North is not actually in that direction, but. Um, a large number of them now have gathered in that direction, giving you an opening. All right, let's go. Well, yeah, Silas will urge people to go. Okay. <clears throat> I will get a stealth check from each of you. Uh, it is plus 10 because you are uh, uh, within that. It is a disadvantage for uh, Medric because glow. Stealth. I'm totally stealthy. I got a plus zero. So, 26. <laughs> so 26, 30, plus 10. and 23. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Uh, as you are all able um, to slip into <laughs> that area, you can see that there is fighting going on. They are, are, she's able to keep them in that area, but she's had to kind of come a little closer than she meant to. And you can see now that at least one spear is sticking out of her. They got a lucky shot. But most of the, the shots seem to be missing pretty uh, pretty heavily. Uh, but they're you get the impression that they're kind of eager for the fight. Um, however, each of you slip one after the other into this hole, which does indeed lead to a staircase inside. Uh, broad and uh, uh, now a little bit worn stone, as it's probably been underwater for a long period of time. Um, the, uh, uh, oh man. I wish I'd put this a different place. I just realized, but oh well. Uh, sorry, I had a momentary uh, 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 excited idea of inspiration that I've got to write down later. Uh, uh oh. Let's see, I've just got to write that down. Whoa. What did the cat do? <laughs> cat almost had a hairball on my clean clothes. Oh. Oof. <laughs> Cat's got a cat, I guess. Yeah, we did need a reenactment. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll, I'll wait a moment uh, for for uh, uh, Annie to to have a a moment um, as the continued battle goes on on the other side. Uh, I need to make sure that I have a spot on the other map because uh, we'll be switching maps in a second here. Well, uh, one thing actually that uh, Annie and Medrick would notice is that Silas is moving completely at ease in the water. Yep. Uh, he's yeah. fast and he's completely in control of himself. Rub it in. <laughs> Her hair balls usually come in two, so I'll probably have to run away mm. for another second. <laughs> uh, blessings of the mother, dude. <laughs> you want to join my god? You can swim in the water. No, I'd rather like have the warm water around me <laughs> from the flames. I didn't. You know what? Yeah, you, you know what that is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. I think this has gone terribly wrong. Uh, okay, so I hopefully will be able to see with my my uh, token eye here uh, as you proceed into the tunnel and you find yourself kind of swimming. The tunnel is remarkably wide and strong, uh, and but. Every time, um, do you walk on the stone or you just swim down? That's up to you. I'll just kind of sink down because I got my armor on. Okay. Um, when your feet come in contact with the stone, you feel the sort of thrumming of power that must be connected to whatever's happening outside. Uh, it is regular, but seems to follow a sort of lopsided pattern, sort of like dun 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 dun, -dun, -dun kind of repeatedly over and over again. Uh, as the sort of power surges up and then and then wells away, coming from beneath you, uh, moving down into the stairs, you you kind of start to realize that the the uh, well, actually, let me have a perception check from all three of you to see what degree of which you realize that what's happening. Um, and I'll go ahead and place you on the other map, but you will see probably nothing if I've done this correctly, which is always a bit of a question. Uh, well, you'll see a little bit because literally um, there's a glow coming from uh, ah. from Medric. But uh, 
you're currently outside of the map. I just placed you there for convenience so that I could see. Okay. 18 perception, though. Uh, 18 perception, 10 from the other two. Wow, okay. Uh, and it makes sense, actually, that Medric would notice because your your feet are kind of touching the stairs. Um, as you as you kind of look, and you're also glowing, so you have the, the best view, um, you notice that the there are scrapes on the tops of the stairs and that they are not all at even distances, as though, as though not necessarily they were just placed there uh, and built as a staircase, but you get the weird impression that they move that they, in fact, could stretch out or shrink or even change angle if necessary. What, the uh, stairs? The stairs. Wow. Um, the walls themselves look like they are stone, but as you move through them, you notice that there is, just below the surface of the stone, uh, can see what looks like uh, cogs, wheels, pistons, some sort of strange uh, collection of machinery. Um, not seen outside of the blacksmith shop to be on to be uh, to most of you. Much of it seems to be rusted from this perspective, um, but it's it's uh, still solid and still still there. In fact, some of it does seem to twitch as though not quite uh, fully uh, immobile. You travel down about fifty feet. The staircase does not seem to swerve at all. It looks like one long tunnel. And you know, I will like whisper to my friends uh, what I'm seeing. Okay. Uh, and as Medrick pointed out, it's, it's easy to notice once, once uh, it's been pointed out. In fact, you notice that the ceiling almost mirrors the stairs. Uh, it itself almost looks like the same sort of sliding rock, uh, almost a staircase upside down. Um, about 50 feet down, you notice that, first of all, there's a plateau. It's the, the, the stairs sort of end in an even surface, and then more stairs head off to the left and to the right and then seem to follow a short junction before stopping at another plateau, about 20 feet down. That thrumming has now become even more loud, the sound of, of rushing energy beneath your feet. Where would you like to go, left or right? Can we see it on the map? Nope, because <laughs> the choice determines where you show up on this map. Hmm. Okay. Have we seen any indication of the forearmed guy or which way he might have gone? Um, make a perception check. Can I look around to see if there's any details you can pick out? Ben, nope. Nope. Unfortunately, um, he probably swam down, which means he didn't even disturb yeah. the small amount of silt that's on the stairs. There doesn't seem to be any light coming from either direction. So we're at the bottom of the stairs. There is hollow to the left and to the right. There are stairwells down on left and right, going down even further. Uh, in fact, Medric, from your perspective, um, the thrumming sound is underneath the main set of stairs, which means these stairs will actually go down and around that, that central area in either left or right. Well, uh, uh, Silas will... Uh... Say in any Z, uh, which direction, boss? State Is the me. water like colder on one side versus the other? Uh, at this particular step, at, at the at the plateau, there doesn't seem to be anything apparently different between the two. Okay. I have no clue. Uh... It's, it's Medrick who perceived things. <laughs> <laughs> he is well, the perceiver. Try to the right. Okay. You head off to the right. In just a moment as I have to adjust where everybody we'll is. We'll wait 10 seconds and see if anything happens to Medrick. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, That's fair. Oh, well, Silas will follow. Medrick up here and start to move you. Uh, I am once again playing around with uh, lighting on this map, so if something doesn't quite work, let me know. Um, I can only see sort of a limited version of it myself. Um, but um, the first thing that happens is that you um, find yourself 
um, moving along uh, at the bottom an opening. Uh, first, uh, let me back up a little bit. You move down the stairway and you find that it turns off to your right, essentially turning on the same direction as the initial staircase. There is an opening at the bottom which looks like it's reinforced. Um, and it looks as though the uh, the opening is in fact open. That's kind of dumb. There is a large door which seems to be open there. Uh, at that door, you actually see a large uh, wheel embedded in the door itself, but the door has been shoved open. Um, beyond that, you can see uh, a stairwell, or sorry, a hallway, um, but you can already see that the hallway seems to turn and twist and seems to, to uh, uh, move downward and to the right a little bit. Um, do you proceed along that hallway? I'm waiting for my friends to catch up. Okay. Yeah, Silas is right there. Only takes a second for the rest to, to catch up. No sign of passage, but again, if someone was swimming, they wouldn't leave one. As you move along and you start to follow along this, this uh, curving passageway, again, the walls seem to have this, this uh, uh, sense of, of stone and metal combined together. But now you're starting to see parts of it moving and twitching, some things actually spinning, some, some things actually uh, uh, pushing back and forth. Um, and you come to another door like the other one that you entered from, the, the one that was open. This one, again, has a wheel in the center. It is solid. The door itself and the other opening are both about uh, 10 feet tall. But this one seems to be I wonder closed. if this, is, this place is alive, just like the last place. What do you guys think? Um, it could be. Silas is going to look back at the other door. Does it look like something we could close and lock? Um, yeah, it certainly seems to be. It's a door. Yeah, not all doors have locks. That's fair. Um, well, I mean, we could. it might work like the other base. We close this door behind us, and it lets us open the one in front. Or it notifies something or somewhere that the door's been tampered with. Uh, that sort of thing seems a little beyond them, to be honest. A little bit. I don't think they built this. No. This looks very, very old. Well, Silas is going down and trying to close the door to see if we can open the one in front of us. Okay. You move back. The door moves extraordinarily easily, even though it must weigh a couple of hundred pounds. Um, it seems to be very, very well balanced. And if the hinges aren't oiled, then they are in, of some incredibly durable material. You close the door, it sort of rumbles closed at its very end. You're not really able to slow it down all that much given to its weight. Um, do you just close it or do you turn the wheel? I'm just going to turn the wheel. Okay. It takes about a, a, about a half turn, uh, again, moving extraordinarily easily until you hear it kind of clunk into place and the door uh, seems solid. For a second, there is no reaction. And then the sound of whooshing uh, rolls up and down the entirety length of this cavern. Um, I mistakenly said that the passageway was to the right when you went down the stairs, but you went down the right-hand stairs, so this would be to the left, pardon me. Uh, on the left-hand wall... Um, you start to notice, and this, this whole thing is kind of twisted and turned, you start to notice that uh, little vents have opened up and the water rushes out and you feel from the other side a rush of air coming in. And within seconds, the room is devoid of water and all of you find yourself standing on the floor. The door in front of you, the one that Medrick is standing in front, you hear a click as though something has released. Well, this ought to make it easier for you guys. That's cool. Just a smidge. Yeah. Uh, they probably noticed something happened. That's entirely possible, yes. That created some sound. All right, let's, let's find the heart. And I'll cautiously move forward. Okay. You step forward into an open space. And the hallway continues to curve and twist. Um... It's strange because even though this is a, a like a manufactured building, 
the hallways don't seem to conform to the normal directions or shape that hallways would. Instead, they seem to curve and twist uh, in unpredictable ways. Uh, at one point, you feel the, the sound of the thrumming uh, power to your left, and then you realize it's above you, and then weirdly somehow behind you, until eventually you find it to your right, and you come emerging out into a very narrow hallway, which I will now place you in. As soon as I can move my cursor to allow myself to do it. And I'll put uh, Mendrick in the lead. Apologies because there are, <laughs> in drawing this map, I realized I did not conform to uh, a, uh, a grid pattern <laughs> because it's a non-organic pattern. <clears throat> but that means that nothing lines up as far as the squares that are there. Um, so hopefully that doesn't get too confusing for folks. Um, and hopefully it doesn't cut off too much. Um, I apologize for that. There's only so we, much magic that I can do. Are we still on 10 foot squares? No, these are five foot squares. Okay. Uh, and I will also have to move my little light. So you will see amongst you uh, a little, uh, a little uh, tiny uh, blue ball. That is just the perspective of the camera. So it is not either an NPC nor it is, is it uh, uh, any one of you. It has sight beyond yours. I'm not sure if that's going to affect it or not, but um, you'll just see that blue ball amongst you. Again, just the camera. Before you, though, you do see a, uh, a branch left and right. As before, while the walls will be drawn as straight, Really consider them to be now um, curved, not only, you know, curved along the horizontal, but curved along the vertical as well, as it seems more and more of this, this exposed machinery is both active and knocking some of the plaster off the surface, uh, but also it, it bulges and wefts and, and winds, uh, large, massive, interlaced cogs, um, uh, pistons and, and, uh, and rods moving. Uh, back and forth. So, where would you like to go? It is now a narrow hallway, and because of the way it's shaped, uh, right now it is single file. All right. Try not to move through the walls. Hopefully they're well exposed. <laughs> Any um, idea where, where we should go? I can barely see, so... Uh, once more, you, start, right? you do have vice, and vice will give you yep. a small radius to see. Yep. So I would take vice out. Okay. And I will... So we tried right last time. Now let's go left. Uh, okay, well. And I will give. They never uh, expect that. Uh, <laughs> it's ten feet of bright light, was it, or ten feet of dim light? Uh, it is the same as a lantern. So twenty, not twenty bright, twenty dim. I'll give you uh, quite a considerable bit more ability to see, or should anyway. Let me know if that worked for you. So I mean, I, I can see because of the dot. So <laughs> actually, I think you can see because of Medric. I don't know if the dot the dot shouldn't be emitting light, but I may have made a mistake there. Um, uh, the dot's certainly controlling vision lines. I don't think we're seeing uh, Medric's one. Keep going, Medrick. Let us know if you find any problems. <laughs> There's a hallway. It turns towards the right. So I guess even though we went left, we ended up going right. And I'll continue to creep forward. Okay. As you step forward, you start to hear the thrumming a little bit less. Um, and you start to be able to make out very, very uh, f uh, faintly, a sort of rhythmic sound of, uh, kind of sounds like hammering a little bit, above and beyond the loud noise that's happening uh, in the walls themselves. There's a sort of hammering sound from somewhere vaguely up front. Okay. All right. Hey, do you guys, do you guys hear that? It sounds like somebody's pounding a hammer. 
Sounds like a lot of people are pounding a hammer. But there's one that sounds extra. Any? <laughs> uh, I forgot to unmute. <laughs> <laughs> Your icon disappeared. Don't split the party. <laughs> Okay, you keep you keep creeping ahead. Yep. Make I'll a look down that check. hallway. Make a perception check. Oh, there is a hallway. There is a hallway, and you see that there it ends in another one of those doors with the large uh, uh, handles on them. Large. There's a door. Handle. Hmm. I wonder if that's to keep water out as well, or if that's some other room. Do you move uh, up we to can take a look? Circle around. Yes, Alice can take a look. I'll just give him space real quick. So I'll move to the side so he can move and inspect the door. Just uh, if you open it, make sure you let us know ahead of time. Okay. Is there any. Uh, is the door completely opaque or is there uh, yes. like a window in it or anything? No, like the other doors, these ones are completely opaque and, and have no grills or openings whatsoever. I will have both Annie and, uh, and uh, Silas make perception checks. If hearing is good for you, then that also will help. 14. Okay. Um, for you, Silas, um, what Sa what Medrick had mentioned a little while ago about a sort of semi-rhythmic hammering, you actually can hear it um, just beyond this door. But, uh, Annie, beyond that, you heard, it was very vague and wordless, but it sounded like a moan coming from beyond that door. How the sound transmitted, you're not exactly sure, but that could mean that it was extraordinarily loud on the other side. So, it, like, there might be someone in there? That's the sense you get. I think someone's in distress on the other side, maybe. Wait, what? I'll put my ear to the door. I hear some sort of moaning. Silas is opening the door. <laughs> Medrick, as you put your ear to the door, uh, you do hear that that uh, thrumming a lot louder. And you you, you think, I, I think I hear as the wheel starts to turn and uh, Silas starts to, to open the door beside you, uh, obscuring kind of the sound that you had. Uh, but although it resists a little bit, um, you get the impression that maybe this door wasn't quite as well kept as the others. Uh, it still turns fairly easily. And you swing open the door. A little bit, yeah. Just a crack to see how far we can see in first. Okay. Um, as you open that door, and let's see if I can actually do the thing. There we go. There's a blue dot on my face. Um, the door swings open, and you see standing before a, a pit. In fact, now you can kind of smell a sort of acrid, almost acidic smell. There's a bit of heat that wafts out as well as a bit of light, um, which I probably should put on the map here at some point. Uh, the uh, a, a skeletal figure standing in front and lit from below, uh, some sort of hot um, uh, basin, some sort of fiery basin, um, it seems to be hammering away at what looks like jewelry, smashing it down into smaller bits and throwing it into the pile. Every time one gets thrown in, you, you, you hear a bit of sound of the, of the, the heat reacting, uh, a little bit of a weird burble as well, and kind of smell a little bit of, of acrid release. Uh, it seems to be skeletal, and among its bones... You see metal bits that seem to be interwoven inside. In fact, now that the door is open, you hear a sort of ticking sound back and forth pretty regularly coming from its direction. 
You can see beyond it, uh, at the far end of the hall appears to be another one of those doors. You can just make out the the uh, the round uh, wheel on the inside. Um, the creature sort of looks up with its eyeless skull and then looks, looks back down to what it was doing, continuing to work at whatever it was. And to be proper, it's really standing about there, just in behind the door. But you can make it out from there. Well, Silas braces for attack, and then it's like, oh. Okay. okay. Also braces for attack, and like, He'll open the door and walk in. Bitch, my, hand, my hammer is held up. As but I'm not attacking by. him unless he attacks first. As you walk by it, uh, Silas, there's a sort of weird familiarity to the space that it's occupying. As you sort of recognize it as a smelter, and in fact, it's taking what looks like uh, uh, metal rings and jewelry and melting them down. You can see a, 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 a partially uh, melted ingot beside it as well. It continues on its work, apparently breaking down whatever these things are and extracting raw metal. Silas is going to try and get a closer look at them without disrupting what it's doing. Okay. And again, you do see another another doorway just beyond. Uh, yeah. As you stepped a little bit closer into the room, though, uh, and kind of step one more, and this, you can kind of hear a little bit of your footsteps, which are still obscured by the spell, um, You, a, a smell hits you. Once the initial wave of the heat has gone by, and the smell appears to be that of rotting flesh or at least sour smell, a little bit like a, a well, a lavatory or a, a bathroom of some kind as well, all kind of mixed together in this this terrible smell. And... On, a, on a scale of uh, one to Marigold's basement, how bad is it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> this would be on par with uh, the public outhouses, actually, would be the, the way to, to describe it. Uh, but once more, now clear, you do hear the sound of uh, uh, a human voice calling out in pain. You'll never get what you want from me, kid. And the voice is familiar. It is Gaetano's voice. How does he keep getting into these places? I'll look at Annie and then back to the skeleton. <laughs> The skeleton kind of looks up at the rest of you at the voice and seems to be considering whether it needs to change what it's doing. You, do, you lean a little closer. You can see that all it really seems to be doing, uh, Silas, is literally taking a, a, a bucket full of random uh, coins as well as uh, jewelry, throwing them into the fire and melting them. And then what, every time it, it was hitting something, it was actually breaking apart the impurities and taking out the, the extra decorative bits it doesn't care about. Most of which drop into the fire. Hmm. Does it appear to be like a dwarf skeleton or a human proportion skeleton or ogre? As you take a closer look at it, two things become apparent. The bones are mismatched. They're being held together by leather and by uh, metal uh, hinges and hooks. And you would almost say that there are parts of it which are dwarven. The shoulders seem particularly broad and strong. The arms, though, are longer than dwarf would have. It stands a little bit shorter than you are, but uh, has a, a, a thinner spine that you now realize is actually doubled up. Um, and if you had to say... It looks a little curved, but it looks like it should be taller. It, it, maybe two elven spines fused together somehow. Sounds like Dr. Marigold made that guy. Uh, does it... Tell my friends, like, it reminds me of uh, Dover, that guy that uh, Dr. Marigold put together. He looked a lot more alive, though. Yeah. Um, excuse me. I'll ask the skeleton. The creature's still sort of watching you. It has a hammer in one hand. Where are we? There's a sort of quirk to the side of its head as it sort of turns 
uh, kind of looking at the, the question as if not really understanding it. But at that moment, it seems to come to a decision and shoves its other hand into the molten silver. Please, everyone, let us roll initiative. Here we go. <laughs> One moment as I clear out the old initiative order. All right. Um, All right, so my icon. <laughs> no. I rolled a one. Character oh, no. sheet. I need to... Initiative. I rolled a... 14, I, I guess. Beat, I beat both of you. Good. Right. Make sure you beat the skeleton. Or make sure yeah. the skeleton rolls low. Let's Bad see. vibes towards the skeleton. Bad vibes? But you just met him. He could have like a whole... Well, maybe not a family. Maybe more like a pod. All right. Mixed results. Uh, let's do descending. There we go. All right. As you see it uh, thrust its hand into the molten uh, molten silver, coating its hand, um, you get the sense, Silas, that this thing means to do harm. What would you like to do? Harm it back. Well yeah <laughs> um okay i have to drop the uh pass without trace but i take a bonus action to hex it and then i'm going to attack it okay uh you sure can... just one hmm. second here i will see if there's an appropriate sorry i'm not going to hex it i have to charge up the staff first i forgot to do that okay so i charge up the staff and then womp it so we All still right. have pass without any trace for this turn uh, yes. Um, is that concentration, Shillelagh? Nope. Okay. Uh, so that's a 23 to hit. 23 definitely hits. It's not a Crap. critical, so... 7 bludgeoning and 5 thunder. Nothing from the hex, because I didn't put that in on yet. So twelve, uh, 7 magical bludgeoning and 5 thunder. Okay. Um, as you, you hit it with your uh, staff, um, the first thing that happens is several of its bones sort of break, and you feel very satisfied as those double spines seem to kink a little bit. And when the thunder damage hits, the entire thing explodes into bits and pieces. Very, very loudly. Uh -huh. But it is now deceased. <laughs> Silas stands back. It's died. I did not expect that to happen. Let you me get hear, a shot next time. You hear pounding on the door on the inside, the interior door. That might be Kitano. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'll shut the door that we came in through. Okay, it moves. I will get out of the door. I was going to say, <laughs> is Andy on the inside or outside? <laughs> oh, to and make sure uh, Andy's on the inside. <laughs> the last trace does slightly dampen the sound. Slightly. Not much, nice. but thunder thunder wave is is noticeably. Um, well, it's sorry. not thunder wave. It's not thunder wave. It, it should make some sort of sound, yeah, but it's yeah. not the same quite the same as thunder wave. The other the other thing here is that there is a lot of loud background noise, but yeah. the thunder sound would reverberate off the walls. In fact, you see some of the the stone facade that was covering over some of this kind of crumble away on the far on the far wall. Um, as you move in, and uh, Medric, I'm just going to move you guys a little bit closer in here. As Medric also uh, uh, kind of closes the door behind uh, behind uh, Annie, you are now in this very crowded space with a door in front of you. I can't uh, see where the door... Okay. <laughs> the door is, is actually right here. I, I think it's on slightly on the inside of the, uh, the vision map, unfortunately. I think I see like the the handle. <laughs> yeah. It it yeah. Note to self: don't use you know dark icons in a dark space because nobody will notice the damn thing. Uh, this door or this uh, handle does not move. It appears to be locked. Um, Silas, well, you do see that there's a lot of raw hot silver sitting right beside you. Huh. Um, Is there an off button? No, it appears to be some sort of uh, uh, coal-fired oven that's beneath this. So eventually it will burn out. Hmm. 
I'll look in the next uh, pile of stuff that the skeleton was going to, like, smelt. Is there anything valuable in there? You can make an investigation check as you look through. Is anybody doing anything about the door, which has people bound, pounding on the other side? I, 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 I would, I would like to investigate the door to see mm -hmm. if it's trapped or anything. Okay. Make an investigation roll. Uh, is that one for the investigation to look into the bucket full of things? It was a two with a minus one because I'm not very bright. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I'll just... Not, nothing good in here. So uh, I'll just... Uh, Sorry, I'll also check it. I'm here, so I'll, I'll grab the hammer and I'll like just casually pound on things so you know nothing is wrong here <laughs> okay just get a hammer malfunction and how are you <laughs> that's a, a very interesting approach I, I i like it um i so in in order of what happened first of all you looked inside the bucket uh, it looks like there was only a few things left in the bucket um and looks like mostly it's just bits and pieces of things that were broken off of others so you kind of disregard it and then go to your comic routine of trying to to pretend to be the thing. Um, uh, Annie, as you look at the door, uh, the door does not seem to be trapped, but it does have a heavy lock, which is going to be a little difficult to pick. Uh, basically, underneath the handle, it looks as though there are two different spaces where something goes in to unlock, kind of like a key, but not not exactly. Um, it is going to be a little tricky to, to pick this if you want to try to. And for Silas, as you look in the bucket and kind of uh, shake it around a little bit, um, you actually see that there is uh, indeed uh, a couple of untouched rings in the bottom uh, and a silver chain as well that seems to have a couple <laughs> of stones in it. You can take a closer look or you can just pocket them at the moment. Uh, I'm going to pocket them for now. Okay. Two rings, silver chain. Yep, just note that for later. We'll work out if you have a chance how much that's worth. Yep. Okay. Um, I feel... Uh, da, 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 da. Now, could I possibly spend extra time on this lock to try to steady my hand to get advantage on, on the, the roll? You can spend more time, yes. Um, I will say that I will need a deception roll from, actually performance roll from uh, uh, from. Uh, from Medric as he's keeping up the ruse. Uh, in the meantime, to see how effective that is. And I, I was thinking in the veins of using the idea of steady aim a little bit. Mm -hmm. Like I, I can aim better. I can like steady my hand. I, I will say it's, it uh, it takes longer than what aim does. Um, aim is an action, or aim is one round, or actually it's a bonus action technically, but one round. This is going to take a couple of minutes to do. It's a longer term task than something. Um, it's like trying to pick a lock in the middle of combat is also difficult. Um, it yeah. increases difficulty. But if you take a bit of extra time, um, yes. Um, it's going to be a couple of minutes, though, to really, to really do that without assistance. Yep. Okay. Are you willing to take that time? Everybody else is willing to give her that time? Sure. Yeah. I mean, I mean, Cyrus would assist, but he really does, wouldn't know what he's doing. So, okay. So, so a pretty convincing replay of the sort of ka clang smack, ka clang. You're not really sure what else of the sounds to make. Um, and occasionally throw something probably in the bucket of molten silver. Okay. Uh, how heavy is there, or how big is the bucket of molten silver? Uh, it is considerably uh, large. Um, okay. You kind of, uh, you it's it's warm to your touch. It's only warm. You imagine anybody else would feel it to be quite uh, quite spectacularly warm. Uh, and you kind of lean on it, and it feels to be about 160 pounds. Okay. So that's easy enough to lift. Uh, that is actually getting into encumbrance territory for most people. Okay. But, I mean, uh, if, some, if somebody walks in and they're an enemy, then, yeah, I have an enemy. Okay. <laughs> you can certainly More try. like flip and toss. <laughs> but I'll okay. keep hammering. Okay. Yep. Um, uh, so, Annie, uh, you've gotten a moment to kind of get a gauge on this. It's going to be a little bit more stressful than usual because your little small thievery tools aren't quite up to it. You're probably going to end up having to use a dagger as a thieving tool, um, given the uh, large sort of industrial nature of this particular design. But you will have advantage yeah. for taking some time. Uh, and I also will 
use vice so that it's a bit more sturdy. It can't just snap out off. Okay. Because physical damage does not break magical items. Uh, so yeah, uh, these tools with advantage of like underneath on the floor. Nice. 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 Uh, as you are able to kind of using the two daggers to kind of lever the thing inside, you feel the door kind of weirdly move inside, although hidden from you and partially uh, understandable just from the, 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 the large wheel that's in front of you, you get the impression that the interior of this door is made up of numerous cogs that all kind of have to twist and turn at just the right time. Um, with uh, Silas kind of standing there, you indicate now, 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 and he turns the, the thing, and you feel kind of the locks twist as each each small turn requires a little bit of extra adjustment. But you're able to, with, with uh, relative ease, uh, be able to kind of turn and twist and coordinate just so that the lock click, 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 click finally opens and releases. And you open that door. I'm sitting on the ground underneath there. If I can reach in and grab that thing. Hopefully I don't delete your icon. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that makes it easier. Thank you. Ah, I just moved all the walls. Oops. Um... This is one of the things I do not like about the system. As I am, okay, just that, just grab that. Something I made sure to do when I was doing maps with lighting um, was to make sure the doors are all different colors to the rest of my walls. I have done exactly that. I'm yeah. just having difficulty <laughs> grabbing the door without grabbing all of the walls. I do not Fair know enough. why. I do not know why. <laughs> Um, and all of it probably just shifted just a second ago. I like this stuff. I just haven't been able to make it work the way I wanted it to work. Yeah. Oh. I apologize. This is just driving me nuts. And I need to do this to make it work. Otherwise, it just exposes the entire thing, which I don't really feel I want to do. Um, maybe we could, like, maybe you can expose the entire thing, but we can all, like, AFK and take a bathroom break so we don't see it. <laughs> uh, I'd hate to, to, to break that up at the moment. Okay. Um, it's just driving me. Uh, it won't stop selecting them. <laughs> okay, I'm moving to another layer and then I'll go back to that layer. Maybe that will make it easier for me to actually do this. Ha 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 ha. That was really not necessary, as I also realized, but because I don't actually have the room dressed. <laughs> and all the dressing is in my head. <sighs> anyway, you open up the door and um, first of all, you kind of open it up and someone kind of falls outward towards you. Uh, as it looks like a uh, a young man, uh, where are you here? Uh, let's see. Oh, I do have a description for. If I can. Find... The door pushes open, person falls, and I'm like, oh. So a young a young man in his late teens with uh, heavily tanned skin, short clo short cropped blonde hair, uh, kind of a loose fitting shirt that has a bit of blood across it. Uh, and hidebound feet. Um, looks kind of like um, a, uh, an urchin, almost. Um, kind of falls down as you come, come out. Um, and then kind of almost instantly gets back to his feet. And in fact, kind of kips up to his feet with his fists kind of out in front of him, looking as though he's, he's ready for a fight. Um, and then kind of takes a half second, looks at all of you, and there's sort of a, a relief that pours over his shoulders. Oh, thank you. Beyond him, you can see into the room, there seem to be several chests. 
Uh, in fact, kind of when any light is shown in there whatsoever, you can see that there are a myriad number of things that uh, look like they've been collected, um, look like chests or things that would have been on the bow of a ship. But over in the far corner, you hear a, a weak moan and see a figure standing upright, except you quickly realize that figure is banded by metal. Actually, uh, more than that, surrounded by a cage in which numerous points are pointing inward and seem to be rhythmically kind of pulsing, stabbing inward, coming out, stabbing inward, coming out. At the center of this monstrosity, you see Gaetano barely holding on to consciousness. It looks as though he's bleeding from every inch of his skin uh, and looks as though he's been tied up in this rig for quite some time. He, uh, however, still manages to sort of tilt his head up, up eyes kind of spotting Annie, and there's this... We need to stop meeting like this. <laughs> bloody, bloody grin that comes across his face. I agree. Kid. Uh, and yeah. I, I pull yeah, myself up because I'm sitting on the ground. <laughs> uh, Silas will rush over and yell, Medric, we need, uh, we need healing in here now. Uh, yeah, I'll pass hammer and or not war, not the uh war hammer but like the jewelry hammer okay and yeah i'll give gaetano a heal as you rush in you can see this device continue to pulse inward and stab him continually mm -hmm. um, silas is gonna try and find a way to open it up yeah same right, right so um, i guess any healing is going to be pointless for now well, well no i'll be there just still gonna get stabbed can i go in the room Yes. Uh, can you uh, I, I, move me? Yeah, I'm perspective. Yeah. I'm trying to. Every time I click, it takes about four seconds to respond right now to the map. So I'm a little slow behind. Apparently, you. I can move it. You want me to move it? If you can move it, that'd be great. It is, I think okay. it should be movable out of everybody, and that's kind of the point. <clears throat> so Gitano looks very, very rough. Uh, every time one of these uh, stabs into him, you can see him kind of wince a little bit um, to the point where um, you kind of get the impression that it is holding him a, a, a hair's breadth away from death. Um, you also right. can see, as you get closer, uh, Medric can kind of look up. You can see that it looks like he hasn't slept in a while, like a long while. And you realize that if this thing has been doing this, he would not have been able to rest, would not have been able to even think or do anything clearly for who knows how long. Uh, what's the machine connected to? Like, you said he Nothing. was in a cage, but like, I'm assuming it's connected to something? It's freestanding. Or at least appears to be. Is there a door or a lock or anything? It looks like it's sealed shut, as in the metal has been forged over. So the mechanism must be, like, underneath. Look down below. It is flush to the floor. But as you look and, and lean a little bit closer, it does feel or, or sound rather like there's a little bit of a metal clicking sound from below. How did they get you in here? And how do we get you out? I don't know. I don't remember. And he kind of winces every time he tries to say anything. In fact, you kind of get the impression that each time he says anything, it stabs him again. Didn't ask questions. Um. Annie, do you have your crowbar? Yes, always. <laughs> been looking for me, um, the boy says. I didn't oh, you hear... They came, he came looking for me, the boy says kind of guiltily. And uh, Gitano says, always. And then gets stabbed. Did you see how they put him in there? They sort of built it around him. He struggled something fierce, but that guy had four arms, and he couldn't really do anything against it. He's already That's pretty badly fun. beaten. Um, yeah, okay. I'll, I'll let Medrick have the crowbar. I will put the crowbar between the cage, now, like the whole and, cage, and 
I know the uh, MVP weapon of this game now is, is, is an item of this game has been that crowbar. The holy mm -hmm. crowbar of, of awesomeness. Which is kind of hilarious and wonderful. Uh, Silas will assist him on the, uh, the athletics roll. Okay. You can try to wrench it open. Oh, yeah. Heave! Right, if Silas is, 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 is assisting me, is that a advantage? That's a advantage, yep. The crowbar oh. gives you advantage. Yeah. The crowbar also gives you advantage. Uh, in this case, as you as you lean on this, it does not budge, but stabs inward. Gaetano falls unconscious. Damn it. Uh, and then wakes up briefly. Out. Yeah. No, he wakes up? He wakes up as something stabs him in the back. And now you realize the true terror of his situation. He's been kept on the brink of death for how long? You don't know. <clears throat> this kind of torture device has been unheard of. So how many spikes are on the inside, roughly? Roughly? 50 to 60? Because I was thinking we can break the spikes, but that's going to take a long-ass time. The way the mechanism right now is, it looks like it is sealed and he's stuck within. It is a loose cage. In other words, it's not solid walls, but instead bands of metal surrounding his body. And every once in a while, one sticks in from one direction, one sticks in from another. His eyes go kind of hazy and then perk back up for a second. Hmm. And how thick is the metal? Most of the metal's not terribly thick. Maybe only as uh, thick as the half the width of your thumb. I could try to heat it up, but that might hurt Gitano. Damn it. And there's no lock on it or anything? Doesn't appear to be. It looks as though it was literally um, kind of reheated and forged around him. At least that's the impression you get. Could also be magical in nature. In fact, it seems like there must be some magic involved. Yeah. Gitano kind of looks around at you all and he can kind of read your faces as to some of the difficulty. Go. Get him out of here. He kind of gestures a little bit towards the young young boy whose face just goes ashen white. Even when he's speaking, he gets stabbed once again and kind of head goes down. Again, stabbed in the back a little bit. Head props up a little bit. Does it only stab you when you talk? He shakes his head. No. He doesn't say no, but... But can we see, like, the mechanism that's, like, pushing that's pushing the spikes in? Or does it seem, like, magical? Um, make, a, make a perception check. Or an investigation check. Um, the difference uh, is that a perception check is just sort of a raw check. The investigation is you're going to have to poke and prod at the thing. Or if you have any uh, appropriate skills, like a, uh, a, uh, a kit, that would also apply. Okay. Hey, guys, yeah. I'll, I'll tell Annie and uh, Silas. Can you find out like what's pushing the spikes in? And I wish we had like Jonas here with us right now. Um, I don't. What was that? A uh, question. Yep. How do you untune an item? Like, do you just choose to tune it, or does it take an hour? It takes an it hour. Takes, it takes an hour. Yeah. If you if you attune another item, then one of them gets bumped out as well. So so usually people to keep the continue continuity would attune a new item and push out another one, but if you just want to unattune, it takes an hour concentration. Um, or moving it far, far away from you. Okay, I was looking at it uh, uh, the other day, and it said you have to unattune one before you can attune another one. Oh, okay, I haven't seen that. but At least for the, core, the, the base rules, anyways. Okay. Uh, 
Well, Silas is going to, hmm. Silas is going to ask to borrow the crowbar. All right. I'll pass him over the crowbar. If I break it, I'll buy you a new one, Annie. That's fine. <laughs> He's going to find a spot that he can wedge the crowbar into it sort of as an extra lever and then he's going to booming blade the end of the crowbar to see if he can smash part of the cage open booming blade is a reaction to hitting a target uh booming blade is a spell cast yep but uh, it's, it's a reaction spell cast to, uh, to hitting a target you attack it in melee and then you cast booming blade technically you cast booming blade and the casting involves hitting it with a uh, hitting a uh, melee target but yes he would have to make an attack roll I'm just saying he's basically doing a uh, empowered strike against it to try to smash things open. Okay. Um, it's uh, an unusual trick, but I'll, I'll let it happen. I got 19 to hit anyways. Okay. Yeah, it's easy enough to hit. In fact, it probably would have been an advantage, but it's a solitary object. Essentially, it didn't need to, uh, to, to uh, fail. Uh, and you do nine points. Uh, and a couple of thunder. And a couple of thunder. Okay. Um, let's see. Okay. Um, as the uh, boom explodes, first of all, you can kind of feel the whole thing kind of shift a little bit under your weight, but it's stronger than, than a, a simple melee attack would, would harm it. Um, the... Um, the thunder damage seems to warp and twist some of the uh, the stone the uh, the teeth out of the way, uh, and they start to try to to pinion at him, but they are far enough away now that they do not. So it has relieved him from at least some of the stabbings. Silas so sends the crowbar back to Annie. Hopefully, it's not bent too much. <laughs> Didn't really hurt um, the crowbar all that much because it's an outward effect. Other, otherwise, it'd be like, I use Booming Blade. Oh, I ruined my dagger. <laughs> that would be neat. <laughs> um, so is the cage, like, mangled in one part of it? Yeah, what part of the cage did you go to strike? What Where around his body would it be? Probably around uh, left shoulder. Basically trying to push it further away from the shoulder and create an opening. Okay. It does indeed create an opening in that side. It would take a lot more than that to fully release him from the cage, uh, but at least for a moment, it seems to be some relief. But if the structural integrity of the cage is like broken now, maybe I can try again with a crowbar, like just with a strength roll. You can certainly try. All right. Can I have that back, please, Annie? Yep. And pull. Pull again. Damn it. Yeah, unfortunately, you're not able to budget. Um, it is made of strong steel that has been reinforced, made specifically for this purpose to make it hard to get out of. The thing that happens, though, when you're doing this is you realize that there must be a way to open it up, unless this is meant to be a death sentence. And even then, they'd have to get the body out somehow. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All of you hear the outer wheel start to turn on the door coming into this area. Damn it. I'll go out and grab... I'll, get, I'll, I'll go behind here and grab the bucket of silver and wait. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, Silas will hang out near the door to the cells. Okay. Same. I'll hold an attack with vice. All right. And and I'll like have the kid go against the wall behind me. <laughs> I just realized that I had opened up that area, so you can probably see what's there anyway if you have some vision. Uh, I can't because the Apparently. eye isn't there. Uh, there we go. Uh, as you see the door open up, and it looks as though another skeleton once again sort of reinforced or interwoven with uh, metal and leather and also somewhat disheveled and misshapen 
uh, opens up the door. Reaction attacks can go ahead. So that I throw the entire bucket of silver at him. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, it is like I said, it's 160 pounds. Yeah, I can deadlift that in real life. I mean, I'm can pretty sure like it at someone. Half or it could be like. Can you throw it at it. someone? It's not exactly just deadlifting. Yeah. Um, but I will allow you to make an attack roll at disadvantage. Okay. Just run over and drop it on him. So attack roll. A. Hey. 18. <laughs> okay. Wait, I... Is that just my proficiency bonus or strength also? Uh, no proficiency bonus because you're not proficient with unarmed or uh, with uh, improvised weapons. Okay, so that's minus three to all of those. Okay, so, 18, so, 15. so 15. So 15? 15 still ah! hits. Uh, roll a d6 plus your strength. Nice. Oh, that's with the plus. That's with the plus. It's like, wow, okay. Maxed out on damage. Not quite. Um, still, that is does it bring a, silver to damage to it. The silver does not seem to affect it at all. Oh, um, just as you remember, uh, as you're doing this, that is the that wrong screen to be typing stuff in. There we go. Uh, just as you remember, <laughs> the other one actually voluntarily uh, threw its arm into the silver. All oh, right. Uh, and the silver seems to coat this thing, but does not seem to affect it at all. Uh, however, being hit with the sheer mass of it clatters off several bones. Uh, now we'll roll initiative. Oh, actually, sorry. One more reaction attack because uh, Annie was ready. Yep. What is Annie doing for a weapon? It is not a very glam skeleton, though. I mean, yeah. is is it in here? No, it's right at the door. Is that this door? Yes. Um, I, I'm at the door over here. Yep. If you had a ranged attack, you could use it for a, for a held action. Um, I'll throw a regular dagger. I rolled out advantage accidentally there. <laughs> 24 is still a hit, though. <laughs> uh, for five points. Okay. Uh, the dagger seems to to hit uh, kind of in that central spine as well. And you can see now that um, these things aren't that well built. Uh, and when you kind of stab through that part, um, the dagger kind of stays in the rib cage. But now the shoulders seem to be hit, heaving and pitching forward as it seems to be a little off. Uh, the clicking noise that's coming from his chest, though, seems to increase. Um, so we will roll initiative once more. Let's see how this lasts. Oops, I forgot to select my character. Um, 15. I'm playing. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Well, we have Annie yeah. going first, and, uh, and then everybody else, and then... Medrick. We'll just watch it. Take it out. Ah. What is Annie doing? Uh, so, is the guy here or, or at the door? Uh, he's actually at the door. I'll put it a little closer there, just to show. Um. I wish this one wasn't locked to the grid. <laughs> yeah. I can actually turn that off, but I think it makes it even more confusing. Yeah. Well, it's just that I could put it here instead of, because this here, not everybody can see, and here, not everybody can see. Uh, let me just see if I can. Uh... Anywho, uh, I will go up here. and. I'm going to turn the grid off. Cool. Which should free up movement to be a little more, a little less static. There we go. There we go. Now everyone can see. Yay. It's a lot of work. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, uh, I will go here and I will stab with wife. Wow, that's a crit. 
So I believe minimum damage I exceeds its uh, capability. Uh, as you as you uh, cut with vice up and kind of satisfyingly sort of bring, uh, well, actually, you describe how you dispatch this this uh, skeleton dramatically. I probably just stab it in like in one of the the leather bands holding it together. Okay. Uh, like not it's knowing the, what's going on. The precise uh, little cut that that uh, the whole thing starts to fall apart, leaving in the bones this time the sort of twisting. Uh, winding center part that was uh, clicking and clacking before, which winds down pretty quickly. From where you are, though, however, you do notice that there's another one was just in the hallway behind it, which you can kind of make out right there. Cool, cool, cool. Um, I will then back up. Are these squares still 10-foot squares? or Five-foot squares. Five foot here? Yeah. Yeah, you should be able to use the measurement or use uh, Q while you're moving to uh, to show the movement. Uh, so I will go back to here. Okay. Uh, it's turn. All of you hear the clacking in the hallway as the thing apparently turns and runs. Silas, you're up. Hmm. Well, I think that set off an alarm. <coughs> uh, Silas is going to go back uh, over to Gaetano, jam his uh, shillelagh staff into the opening he made earlier and try real hard to make it bigger. Okay. I'll help him out. Uh, well, you don't... Well, actually, you, go, you can wait for Medric to catch up to you. Yeah. Technically, Medric's the one probably who I should have roll. <laughs> yeah. But I get here first, so. I don't want to break your staff. I got a 15. Um, unfortunately, you're unable to move the bits on your own. I duck under and say, Medric, give a heave on this and let him take control instead. All right. <sighs> I keep hold of the staff because if I let it go, it stops being enchanted. And I'll cast guidance on myself so I get a nice extra D four. <laughs> huh? I'm keeping watch. Oh my god, really? Oh, oh, oh. But I get advantage. Fuck sakes! Oh. Uh, Unfortunately, the the way this thing is weighted and with uh, with Silas kind of hanging off one side, it makes it kind of awkward. Um, you can roll your d4, but I can tell you right now that that won't be enough. Yeah, it's not going to be enough. Nope. Um, Annie, you're kind of right. waiting there? Yeah, uh, I have my short bow notched, and I'm keeping an eye on the door. Okay, make a perception check. Eleven. Unfortunately, over the sound of the uh, the sort of clattering walls and the bit of banging, crashing going on inside the other room, you don't make out anything. Okay. Um, uh, I'm going to actually slam that door shut. Like, not slam it, but like shut it so that it makes noise if someone comes and someone has to open the heavy door. Okay. Um. Is there a way to open that door from the inside? Yes, it has a wheel on the inside. Okay, so the, but the kid wasn't able to open it when they were locked oh, in here. Th th that <laughs> door? Oh, the outer door. Okay. Yeah, no, yeah. I I assumed it was the outer door, and no, there is not a, a an opening on the inside of this of this uh, yeah. particular door. You get the impression that this was built specifically to keep things in, uh, mostly treasure, but occasionally, apparently, people too. Yep. No, just making sure we weren't locked in here. All right, screw that. Uh, it's hammer time. So I will grab the warhammer with two hands and aim for the spot that Silas damaged already. Okay. Heck, aim for it. I'll hold and it I there. Wanna... The staff. The staff is magically strong right now. What was that? Aim for the staff. Okay. I'll put the staff in there. Just smack it hard. All right. Does that mean like, advantage? Like a chisel? <laughs> yeah. Um. 
Sure, we'll say advantage. Just don't roll the ones because that would be bad. Yeah, it would be. I have a shillelagh do. You jinxed it, didn't you? Or does it only, does it only jinx it when I say that? <laughs> Let's find out. Advantage. Uh, you guidance yourself? Ah, boom. Wow. Advantage. <laughs> <laughs> One of them, but not both. Uh, having both would be terrible. Uh, and this time you are able to break away a large section of the upper cage, um, now basically exposing his entire right shoulder and his back, um, which again is sort of bleeding from numerous wounds. Uh, the thing all seems to convulse a little bit, stab inward, and he goes unconscious, and then it stabs again, and he goes briefly conscious, as though it reacted to that. He's not free, but he's largely released. In particular, his legs are still bound, and one of his arms and shoulders are still bound. Can I pull him out of the cage, though? You can certainly try. All right, let's do that. I'll assist. Okay, that will be a uh, acrobatics check because it's not just about sheer strength; it's about maneuver. No. <laughs> acrobatics. I got a zero for acrobatics, but I got advantage, and I'll cast guidance on myself. Like, all right, all right, I got this. If if you need more finesse, you can ask me to help. Hey, Anya, could can you like uh, tell me, make sure I'm not like dragging him through spikes? <laughs> yeah, uh, I can even like swap places if it's finesse. Well, he's going to make an attempt right now, which was uh, plus a d4. <laughs> Fuck. So that's a 13. 13. You're not able to pull him out, but you do manage to avoid dragging him across the spikes that are already there. They don't seem to convulse as much this time, almost as though the machine itself is damaged and is not reacting as it should. All right. Uh, uh, Andy, do, you, do you want to get this a shot? I, I will swap with someone to keep someone keep an eye on the door while I give it a try. All right. Uh, I'll cast guidance on Annie. And I will assist. Well, okay. teamwork. That's the te that's the dream. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> wow. Thirteen. He's wedged in there in particular. One of the spikes no longer seems to be coming out. It injected into his one of his arms and is still holding him there, um, which puts it at a precarious uh, uh, area. Should I knock some more cage out of the way? I, I might need a little bit more cage knocked out. All right, let's do that. Okay. Silas is going to just go ahead and smash away the section that's get his arm jabbed in. He says, sorry, Gaetano, I'm pretty sure we can fix this, and then smash. Okay, with the shillelagh again, or with Guidance. the blade? Yep. <laughs> uh, Guidance helps with skill checks, doesn't help with okay. uh, attack rolls. With attack rolls, unfortunately. Um, but yes, he will go, uh, let's see, where's that? Uh, he's He will do the sonic uh, thingy, but not he hasn't hexed anything, so... Yeah, our cover's blown right now, so just get him out as quick as possible. Yeah. Okay. Well, I've got Again, a 14 hit. Uh, you do hit. Again, the physical damage doesn't seem to bother it too much, uh, but the thunder damage blows away some of the spikes. You see Gaetano also kind of wince a little bit. Uh, more likely that because he was jostled and he has one of the spikes still in his arm. Uh, mm -hmm. he, he passes unconscious at this point, and nothing seems to be there to jab him back awake again. Did I knock away much of the thing that was jabbed into his arm? Um, oh, yeah. Actually, yes, you would have knocked that one out of his arm now. So it's no longer holding him. Um, he's just bleeding from everywhere else. Uh, I the mechanism before... seems to be damaged, where before it was also injecting him with something to keep him alive. That part seems to have been damaged as well. Pull him out. Before I pull him out, I want him healed because I don't want to be the one who kills him by dragging him across the spikes. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yep. Okay, then he's going to get a... He either healed or stabilized. I don't care. Actually, uh, Silas will grab one of the magic uh, crystals. Yes. Uh, okay. And he'll, he'll, I guess, break the crystal uh, against uh, Gaetano. 
be healed. Smash. <laughs> well, not smash. It. He'll place it against him and then try to like. Actually, he'll try to put it in one of uh, one of uh, Gaetano's hands and then try to to break the crystal by twisting it. Okay. Uh, to get it to shatter. Uh, I will say it's awkward, uh, but in the mm -hmm. dire circumstances that are facing, I'll say it succeeds. So the crystal smashes apart the little uh, little uh, motes of healing energy that are contained within flow into him, um, and he gets he four gets points. Six. Or six uh, well, points, it's plus two, so six. Yep. Six points. So he comes, he kind of, <sighs> and heaves a heavy sigh, uh, kind of looking Very around terrible. himself as though, you know, Maybe it was a pleasant dream he was just in, and this is definitely not where he thought he was a moment ago. Uh, but now, uh, still awake. Quick. We're not leaving you. Um, I will say that's the most hit points he's had since this entire encounter. <laughs> uh, go, go, go. Yep. Uh, you're still helping me? Yep. Oh, Oof, that's much better. There Yay. you go. Now with him released from the spike and with him able to help you because he's conscious, you're able to sort of lever him gingerly out. He still has a scrape along the leg as it comes out because this thing is just that vicious, um, but he is able to maintain consciousness as he's dragged out, uh, kind of uh, lying down into the, the uh, awkward pile of... of, uh, of um, crates and boxes and chests that are right here uh heaving thank you i've been and you can see him kind of struggling to even concentrate on words um and he yawns involuntarily uh, it's kind of been a while he kind of shakes his head uh, i'm glad you found me found us we have to go they they, they know we're here and I'll cast a level three cure wounds on him. Okay. Hey, nice him. Nice. Nice. So he gets 19 HP and I get... <laughs> well, he perks up considerably at that. And I got to bring up his character sheet. Under I only take two pieces. damage. <laughs> Um, okay, and let's see, does he have any of those? Uh, he does not. So, uh, he uh, straightens up considerably at that, and then still kind of stumbles a bit. Um, you can see from the, the sort of redness of his eyes that he probably hasn't slept for a few days. Been constantly under torture of that particular machine. Which way's out? Uh, We're not sure. Well, uh, we need yeah. to find some We're going in first. Uh, Silas is going to go try to open any of the chests and see if there's anything we can use in there just with a quick glance. Yeah, it looks like most of them have been broken open anyway and rifled through. Um, you find uh, a couple of silver chalices. Um, some fine dishes that have been broken into small pieces, probably because they were looking for something else. Uh, considerable amount of, uh, of gold. But uh, make an investigation check as you look around proper. And how much, time, how much time are you willing to look around? Um, basically until we can get him walking okay. Uh, maybe a minute or so. Not super long, but he won't want, he'll try to just sift through things quickly and see, oh, uh, let's see, no weapons. Uh, he's literally looking for more useful stuff than cash. Cash will have to wait. Okay. Um, useful you now. You find, uh, yeah, you're kind of looking around. There's, you know, a couple of, of uh, more uh, bags that just have coins in them. Looks like they've been kind of semi-consolidated. Uh, there's a, a bag that seems to have uh, a few gems in it as well. Um, there's a few weapons, but most of them have already been kind of uh, broken down into bits and pieces. Um, kind of, you suspect, is the first stage of trying to melt them for whatever goods they might have within them. Uh, let's see. What was your roll? Check 20. 20? Nice. Okay. Uh, 
then you will also find, uh, let's see. Mm -hmm. In the back of one of the chests, you find a, uh, a small potion, uh, a bottle that somehow managed to not be broken during all of this. There is a small moat of something glowing in the center of the bottle. Uh, let's see, what else did you find there? Um, there appears to be what looks like a, uh, a probably kept in here because of the sort of band of silver that's around it. Uh, and the, uh, sorry, it is a chain or appears to be a chain, which is rigid. Looks like it's coated in silver, which is probably why it's in here. Uh, but to your practiced eyes, you recognize that as probably a wand. So you can write down chain wand. Uh, let's see. One box that seems to, to hold, uh, um, uh, yes, seems to hold uh, numerous papers um, that seem to be wrapped up and bundled up with uh, leather. Uh, it seems to hold a, uh, a, a symbol, which when you kind of show anybody else or when anybody glances over, uh, Annie, you recognize that as the royal seal. Uh, and it has Gaetano's crest on the side of it. Uh, you recall that one of the things he was missing that went overboard was some of his own papers. That is, seems to be the bundle that seems to have been his chest. Um, it also contains clothing. It looks like the clothing was kind of strewn about as they were looking for anything else inside. Uh, and you also see a small ring that's on the pile of uh, a pile of gems and coins. Uh, the ring seems to cover two fingers. Uh, and it looks like it's made out of gold. But judging from the way that it's not uh, tarnished, you have a feeling that it's probably a magic ring. So you can okay. mark that as a double finger ring. Um, okay. Aside uh, from Silas that, there's, will... there's assortment of broken weapons, mostly. Yeah. Uh, Silas will, will pocket those. He'll toss the papers to Annie, since the royal seal is on it, uh, and say... I, these may be important, um, but he will also pocket that bag of gems you mentioned. Okay. And the bags of coins that have been separated, was there anything for, uh, were any of them gold or platinum? Uh, no platinum, but it does look like there's uh, gold, silver, and copper in one particularly heavy bag. Okay. He'll uh, he'll pocket the the bag with the gold uh, in it, uh, or gold, silver, a... whatever it is. About, uh, I want to say, 30 pounds. So it's a lot heavier okay. than it appears. Okay, he'll take off his backpack and put it in the backpack. Okay. Um, he said, we should probably get to some other place that we can at least hide out for a bit. Yes. Uh, here's some clothes, Gaetano. They might be yours. I don't know. He kind of pulls at the shirt that he was wearing and it sort of falls apart, pierced in dozens of places by uh, the nasty things. You can see now as he pulls his shirt off, first of all, um, the pock marks all over his skin have kind of con almost consolidated into a, a massive sticky red. But you can also see these, these massive tattoos that cover most of his body um, that seem to whirl and twist on their own. Um, but he quickly pulls in, pulls on a shirt just to have something. Uh, he grabs a broken sword, and is grabbing the blade of the of the of the sword. This will do. Uh, there is a hammer in the other room. Something from uh, the other hand. Pass him the kid. hammer. Uh, it's kid, still what's kind your of name? covered in gold. Uh, Lowen, oh. sir. Kid named Lowen. L O W E N. Yep. Yeah. Do you know how to fight? I can fight if I need to, sir. Okay, because things might get scary. Uh, try to stay away from the fighting if you can. Uh, we'll try to keep you safe, but we have to go further in before we can leave. There's something we have to stop. Stick have you heard them head. mention anything about a heart or something powering whatever this place is? Um. Gitano kind of shakes his head, trying to, to clear it. Um, I don't know exactly all about it. There was one scary guy in a hood who just seemed to be ruling everything, even telling the four-armed guys what to do. 
Was he? And, uh, were they human or sea devil? Mostly sea devils. That's what I thought to find down here. He wasn't though. Humanoid of some kind. Probably dead. Diamonds for eyes. Not that I could tell. Just All realized right. I don't have Lowen on the map, so I'll be trying to find an icon here in a moment. Um, probably going to be one of the kids from the uh, from the tower. That's what I happen to have on hand. Um, I will ask Gaetano. I'm uh, I'm guessing that these are yours. You're displaying the the pages. Yeah. Ah, good. I wonder where the hell all that stuff to gone to. I hate for that research to go to waste. Still. If I don't get out of here, make sure you keep that. Should make for some good reading. I'll stick it underneath my chest plate so I have a better chance of kind of staying dry. Okay. That is my attempt. I mean, it, it's wrapped in leather too, so. Yeah, this stuff is actually sealed against against uh, water. So. If it's if it's sealed against water, then I'll just put it in my bag. Yeah, it was a, yeah, it was actually like a box with papers and wrapped in leather. So. Well, the the papers yeah. themselves are wrapped in a leather a leather covering, yeah. which looks like it's been sealed. And thankfully, yeah. the seal seems to have held. Um, here we go. There is. Yeah, we better. Wow, he's huge. What's going on here? <laughs> yeah, there's no other exits here. It's just back out that uh, door at the the tunnel yep it appears to be a a dead end or a room okay um yeah we should probably get going uh remember this room on the way back uh it, we might be able to grab more um, yeah. um i like your optimism kid yeah uh, I'll, I'll tell him the situation at like outside, uh, and I'll also tell him the directions. Like this is how we got here. Mm. Uh, and if you see a giant water woman, she is our friend. And uh, uh, lopsided mm -hmm. smile. Of course, you'd have a giant water woman friend. <laughs> Uh, her name is Rigolesta. Uh, if you do see her, tell her that uh, that you're with us. All right. Your word uh, carries a lot, I understand. And you see him kind of gl glancing over to Lowen, as in, as in, yeah, don't tell the kid, kind of thing. Uh, um, yeah. Uh, Silas is going to kneel at their the skeleton that Annie took out. Uh, did, uh, nice work on this, by the way. And he wants to look at the chest because there's some clicking going on for both of them. Mm -hmm. Can he see any of the mechanism? As you're going to poke through it, um, you do indeed see some sort of, of mechanism at the very heart and center of this. And as you kind of reach in maybe to, to, to pick it up or at least push it out of the way, you notice there are thin spidery wires that seem to be silverish that are extending from it to the different parts of the body. Oh, like a puppet. Do you think they're smart? As in the one that ran away, do you think he would have told anybody well, or made an alarm? I think if it was smart enough to run away, it's probably smart enough to warn the others, yeah. Um, can I pull any of the mechanism out? Like, I'll snap the rib cage if necessary. It does take a bit of work. Um, keeping in mind that the, the, the door is closed, this is only the one that's inside the room. Unless you're actually venturing out. I see Medrick has stepped out in the hallway. Oh, yeah. Ventured out. Yeah, well, I think just as we're getting ready to go out into the hallway, Silas just ducked down because he wants to see if he... Basically, he wants to try and pull out a bit of the mechanism to see if there's any similarities to what was in the what he saw of the rat. Okay. Uh, are there it, are those? Is there that uh, the little runes along the the fusing lines, that sort of thing? Uh, it's just going to be quick, so he may not see anything. But yeah, uh, at the moment, uh, you kind of easily break through the 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 the, the bones. Oh. You get the impression they're really really brittle, almost as though the bones are very very old. 
And again, there's mm. definitely a mismatch in the bones that are there. Uh, the uh, the mechanism itself is only about the size. It'll fit in double double hands like that together. Um, so okay, it's actually so relatively small. A little bit larger than the rat, but not much. Uh, and uh, it looks like it's mostly semi-sealed. Um, so you don't really see a lot of the mechanism itself. Uh, it rattles a little bit when you shake it. Um, the wires that kind of extend out from it uh, kind of kind of uh, uh, whip back and forth. Um, unless you were taking time to open it up, you can't really see much for details about how it functions. And it seems like it's relatively complete, like all self-contained. Uh He's just going to try and cut the lines and stuff it in a pocket. Okay, easily enough done. Um, as you step out in the hallway, Medrick, and kind of uh, get your bearings, um, the whole place seems to shift and and shudder, and all the the activity that's going on in the wall seems to increase. Uh, more and more of the of what you now recognize as a facade of stone crumbles off the walls, as though the entire place was suddenly starting to flex and move. Are we in a giant mechanism? Silas will say that out loud. Probably. You know what, well, Regalessa said about the other place. Well, then our way, the, the way we came might not be the way out. Yeah. I don't know if we would be able to make it out the other way anyways. He can't breathe the water. And he doesn't have Gaetano's luck. I can hold my breath if I need to. I used to be a pearl diver. Well, that changes things. Um, but we should still we should continue forward. I mean, Gaetano, if you and Lowen want to to leave, that's the way we came in. I don't know if there's going to be more guards there or anything, but there weren't when we came in. Yeah, but, but there, the, the there walls were... be moving and stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. So, good point. And, and we've already established that like the stairs and stuff seem to move. So who's to say that that yeah. way disappear? The, the walls and things seem to move, but they never seem to change relative position. It was more okay. that they didn't follow straight line paths and kind of curved okay. and twisted in ways that halls don't normally do. Okay. I'd, I'd feel safer with the two, <laughs> two of them with us anyways, but uh, he'll look to Gaetano and Lowen and say, it's up to you. Uh, follow us if you wish, if you wish to try to make it out on your own. That might be safer. I, I can't tell. And there's uh, also a twelve to fifteen sea devils outside. Just yes. Outside. One thing at a time, kid. First of all, there's no way in hell you could ever convince me to leave now. I've got any kind of glances over at any certain obligations to take care of. Besides, this kid's my responsibility, and I came looking for him, and I found him. So technically, I've succeeded. I just had a little bit of distraction along the way. Okay, then um, we better... I will right. give the kid one of my three daggers. Okay. It's just a regular dagger, so he has something. It. He looks at it, and when he takes the dagger, there's a sort of combination of things that happen. One, there's a determination that crosses his face. And he kind of nods to you. And, and he said that he can fight if he has to. And you get the impression that he's had to more than once. Then there's sort of a, 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 a little trick he does with the dagger. And you realize that he's very adept. And he was kind of weighing out the dagger to see how strong it was going to be, how, how balanced it was. Um, and he, there's a weird moment, too, where he kind of the look crosses his face of, I guess this will do, where he recognizes the dagger is not exactly of the highest quality. Uh, as if he's held something better. But he kind of nods his head. All right. I can do this. Okay. All right. So let's look at Medrick and let's go. Um, I will also give Gaetano uh, another crystal. Uh, okay. If you break this, you can, you can heal yourself more. Well, that's handy. Usually you break the bottle, you lose the thing. Yeah. What? Uh, Found the giant water lady. <laughs> I gotta meet this lady. Um, go ahead and roll if you haven't already the uh, healing of that. And what I'm going to do? Oh, I can't do that. Okay. Well, I'll have to keep control of Lowen and uh, nice. myself. 
Another nice. 10. Oh, 10. Um, he's looking a lot better. Mm. Especially to where he was. All right. Well, that's good because he's had like 39 healing. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll give you the hint. When he when you when you arrived, he was at two hit points, mm. and had been at two hit points for days. Uh, yeah. and actually, as we walk along, uh, Silas is going to pull out the potion, and because going to the book, a slight taste of it will tell you what it does. So he's just going to like dip a fingertip in I and. Mean, and that's one Try of the it. ways that can be interpreted. That is an optional rule, yeah. but I will allow you to make an Arcana check. Good. I am decent with Arcana. I am happy with that. When is that going to roll? 22! Hey. 22, nice. Um, it burns your tongue, even the little tip of, uh, the little uh, tipple that you take. Uh, Ow, it's garlic. It, 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 <laughs> uh, it continues to burn, almost painfully for a second or two. Uh, and then you uh, you feel like all of your burdens so longer now no longer weigh anything whatsoever, as though you've grown immensely in strength, as though you now have the strength of a fire giant. And you realize what this potion actually is a potion yeah. of fire giant strength. Okay, well nice. that's a good thing to keep in mind. You will cork it and put it back in, and forget about it entirely. For like 22 sessions and then mm -hmm. some place I, I think i have you if you like well i have this potion which is awesome um okay we are Thanks. nearing five o'clock um we can go a little bit further sure yeah, yeah. just have to look up uh, okay um as you proceed a pace now uh, i believe you no longer have uh Without a trace? Um because uh Shillelagh is concentration? Nope. Shillelagh is not. I keep no, I don't I, actually I, I still have that up because uh and the last I was gonna have something but I didn't thirty minutes. It lasts for an hour. No, okay. So that is still in effect. Uh, you are starting as soon as you step into the hallway though, you do start to hear the sounds of uh of clattering come in your direction. How yeah. much clattering? Um, you can yeah. make a perception check to get a check to try to get more detail. I would like to as well. Yes. Just clattering. <laughs> You're not really sure. It might actually be just the uh, the sound of the walls themselves. Now they picked up. Not much better. Nope. Um, considerable amount of clattering up, up, up in front of you. The thing that uh, Silas hears is the clattering is kind of cut through for a moment uh, by a, a sound of metal grinding on metal. And then mysteriously, the clattering is ever so slightly less. Huh. Now, these Did it always... sound like... Did it sound like dozens of things clattering or like a single thing clattering? Um, it sounded like more than one, but less than a dozen. Okay. Uh, and yeah, so I was take a peek. Or wait, it's dark down here. Let me just take a peek. Yeah. All right. Um, I'm assuming Silas is in the hallway too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I think we're all out walking down the hallway. Yep. Keep in mind, this hallway is generally pretty narrow. In most places, it's only going to be single file. But can I like move past Annie if we're careful? Um, you can move through uh, a uh, a cooperative alliance uh, allies square. Yes. Okay, so I'm just gonna take a little peek down that hallway or down that bend. Okay. And seems to be. I'm better in the middle anyway. <laughs> seems to be nothing there. There's nothing there. Should we keep going? I heard something quiet them down a bit. Watch out, they may have something similar to what we're using. But yeah, I'd say press onward. Cautiously. Probably in a corner or something. Cool. 
as you move on, um, the clattering becomes louder. And this time you can tell that it's accompanied by some sort of grinding metallic sound. And the entire place seems to shudder once more and tilt slightly. Can I get a dexterity saving throw from each of you? And I will try to get uh, Gitano and Lowen to catch up. 18. 22. 16. You're all able to maintain your footing as the floor seems to shift and shake beneath you. Almost what as though the entire building is moving. Did it stop? Uh, it seemed to be only brief. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm still laboring under some slow uh, movement here, so I have to uh, just make a quick one for him. Yeah, even in his uh, rough state, he's still able to maintain his balance. <sighs> Lowen falls over. Splat. Kind of almost like he slipped on something, but he's back on his feet almost instantly. And do I actually have low on the map? Yes, I do. Okay. As you continue to move around. All right. I'll peek around now this corner. You, now you can clearly hear the clattering up ahead, growing louder, and the grinding sound is accompanying it. Uh, I would like to not not an arrow in my short, short bow. Okay. <laughs> you see a doorway up ahead, blocking off the hallway. Right here. There's a door. Sorry, where was here? Uh, right there, where, right in front of where Medric is. Uh, note that this space down here is a bit wider, so it's easier for people to get around each other. Well, do, so the, the the sound is from beyond the door? It does seem like that. And getting louder? Yes. Okay. Well, we could either wait here and attack when they start to move through, or we could try to get through the door ahead of them and possibly avoid them, but that might... I don't know what our success chance of that is going to be. You never do. Yeah. Nope. <laughs> so he looks at Annie. To... This would have a bit of a bottleneck effect. Yeah, just yeah. a tad. Well, if we want to set up here for a bit. Um, then. Uh, Silas will, uh, while we're. While we're prepping for something to come through the door, Silas is going to pull out that wand and take a look at it uh, okay. until something starts to actually open the door. Uh, Gaetano tells Lowen to stay back and watch from where they've come to make sure they don't get snuck up from behind. Um, you take, you pull out, pull out the wand and take a look at it. Yeah, I mean, technically, he needs an hour to really check it over, but he'd be looking at it anyways. Okay, make an Arcana check. Fourteen. Fourteen. Definitely a magical yep. wand. Yeah. Uh, but that's about all you can really tell from a, a very quick uh, look like that. Yeah. Yeah, not a problem. In front of you, Medric, the wheel starts to turn as the door is being oh. opened. Wand goes right. back in the pocket. Silas charges up his staff. Actually, Silas will charge up um, whatever rocks he can grab off the ground or something there's any like detritus the thing, there the only thing here is the the sort of remains of the facade wall of rock um there sure. are some chunks of that yeah he'll grab uh, like five pieces of that and charge them up or three i think it is okay i'm preparing a spell if there's hostiles on the other side of the wall then burning hands is going to happen right in their faces okay um, the wheel, wheel spins, the door opens and hits Medric because it opens towards him. Do you get out of the way? Oh yeah. 
I thought there was like doors that rose up. Nope, they swing. Uh, Knowing however, that, uh, just park myself outside of where the door is going to hit. Yeah, I'll allow it. As the door opens up, and you see another one of those uh, those skeletons, a little bit more reinforced than the one you had faced before, standing behind the door. Beyond that, there appears to be a much larger amalgam of bones. And now you realize where the grinding of metal has gone, come from. It's come from two large spinning blades that seem to be embedded on swing arms in the center of its body that have spun up to full motion. Now, we have the option. We can take this fight and do it right now, but we're at 5 o'clock, so it's going to definitely take longer. What do you say, guys? If it's just a couple of things, I'd say go now. I think we can take them. Yeah. I mean, we're in the mall. All right. Sounds like we're we at least have two out of three. Um, that was the uh, the chance to push this off to another day, but that's okay. I don't mind this because I'm ready. Uh, that okay. does mean, however, that your surprise attacks go off. Medric and Annie and Silas, did you prepare an attack? Yeah, he had the magic stones charged. Okay. So he could throw. So starting with Medric, burning hands. Whoosh. What is the it range stay, of, uh, of uh, burning huh? hands, please? What is the range uh, of burning 15 hands? 15 foot cone. 15 feet. 15 foot cone? Is it 15? Yeah. Okay, it's yeah. still just going to reach the first one, though. Yeah. Uh, what kind of a save is that? It's a dexterity saving throw versus 13. Seems unlikely. Let's see what happens here. A five is not enough. <laughs> Eat flame. All right. What's the damage on that? Nine. Nine points. As the flame uh, rushes over it, one thing that you realize is that heat does not seem to bother these as much as you noticed from the silver before. So while it does some damage, it doesn't do as much as you had hoped. Damn it. Uh, that would be Annie next for the uh, shot with the bow. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I will aim at uh, if I can, can I aim at the nope. this one? It's a held action, so all you get is your action. You don't get bonus or anything else. And you didn't see it before, so you couldn't have aimed beforehand. Yeah, okay. Cool. But she, could she be firing at the distant one? You can fire at it, yes. But you can't aim. Yeah. Sorry if I was being too specific there. Yeah. Like, I was going to shoot at something at the on the other side of an opening door, so... Yeah. Yep. Yep. You can see the other one there as well because Medric serves as a very good lamp. Yeah. Uh, then I will try to hit the, the farther one with an 18. 18 hits. Nice. This is five. Unfortunately, you note that the arrow seems to do no damage to it whatsoever. That's good. Uh, it's almost as though the point of the arrow did not. Uh, connect with it. Cool. Well, I'm right, using uh, it against that guy. It, it, rattled, <laughs> it rattled around inside, though, so it wasn't like it was impervious to being hit. But that kind of damage seemed to do nothing to it. Um, that means it is Silas's turn. Yeah. Gitano uh, does not have a held action. Yeah. yeah. Be a little over here. But, um... Yeah, Silas is just going to go with the closer one. Uh, hopefully, he can clear that out and then we can take on the other one. Uh, let's see. Magic stone. Throw oh, magic stone. 25 to hit. Absolutely. Uh, no hex, though, so just the eight bludgeoning damage, which okay. is near the stone kind of seems to to rattle around on the inside of its, uh, of its uh, uh, body um, and uh, kind of bounce around, breaking several ribs before popping out the front. It seems to teeter and totter as though most of its internal mechanism was somehow disrupted. Still managing to hold on for the second, however. Okay. Uh, that is now initiative order. So be sure to roll your initiative. Right. My icon. That twice. So that's the one he actually gets. Uh, that one. And poor Lowen. All right.
right. All the initiatives are in. Yep. yep. Annie, you are up. Aha. Uh, so I am going to. Oh, did my wait? One of my things didn't make it on the initiative tracker. That's weird. Uh, yeah. The oh, skeleton of five point one four didn't. Actually, it's the other one that didn't. Uh, weirdly enough. All right. And it got. Uh, you're still good to go because it got a twelve. Uh. So I am going to shoot this guy with a short bow. Okay. Maybe not. Uh, you actually miss him. Uh, the arrow goes flying on through and clatters down the hallway. This probably has to do with all the missing bones. You haven't given out inspiration, did you? Do no, inspiration is not something I do very well. I apologize. It's, it's all good. I just had the thing selected. I'm like, I don't remember that. <laughs> uh, yep. Uh, so, uh, I'll, uh, tell Medrick to try to aim for the leather straps, uh, and give him advantage on his next attack. Actually, if you want to tell Silas that, uh, he's about to throw another rock at it. Yeah. Uh, and then Silas, Silas will throw a rock at it. Um, oh. 16 to hit, 6 magical bludgeoning. Um, oh, right, it's advantage because of the stone. Oh, because of the, the shout. Uh, 16 yeah, man. hits. And uh, that creature, uh, the, the last stone literally cracks across its forehead, and it just sort of stands there for a moment, stunned, and then falls apart. The last hey. constellation severed. Right. Next up. Oh, it's the buzzer. No. I was hoping it was the skeleton, but no. Now fully engaged, and you can see the, the blade spinning within it. Uh, the blades extend outward and touch ag across both sides of the wall, churning into it. And it runs straight forward. Uh, where are we? There we are. What is its move? Do, do, do. Uh, and we'll get to there. As it moves, it kind of unfolds itself, enveloping and then passing over Medric, charring, uh, car carving at him as it attempts to move through. Uh, let's see. Uh, da -da 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 -da. You have to make a dexterity saving throw, Medric. Mm-hmm. Well, he knocks me over. <laughs> um, actually, no, you oh, just take 12 one. slashing damage as it carves through you and around you, kind of everywhere at once. Um, and I believe at that point... Uh, yes. At that point, it comes to a stop in front of Annie. You can see that it was charging straight at you, and kind of went through, around, over, and uh, above Medric, and stops, and, and kind of is still in the process of moving, but just gets to right in front of you, uh, within arm's reach. Uh, that is its turn, as it sort of charges. Uh, that close to it, you can also see um, this, the, similar to the other ones, it has a mechanism inside, but this mechanism is much larger, seems to be located in more than one spot, but there is that glisten of silver as it passes around Medric. Um, you can almost imagine as though the, the fact that it's a skeletal shape is kind of redundant, as all of its bits and pieces seem to expand out, flail in all directions, directed mostly by the two blades, and then come back in a roughly a skeletal uh, form in front of you. You also notice that its two forearms are not hands, but in fact themselves are also uh, what look like discarded swords. Uh, Lowen. Lowen is going to defend himself. He's going full defensive and keeps watching down the hallway uh, and trying not to pay attention to the buzzing sound and grinding against people. 
Medrick. Well, I'm going to hurt this guy back. So, hammer. Smack. Uh, 14. 14 meets. That's so that hits. Boom. A max damage. Uh, what kind of damage is it? What are you using? Uh, the Warhammer. So probably just normal bludgeoning. So bludgeoning damage. Okay. All right. That seems to hit quite satisfyingly at some or several of the, the bits and pieces. The bones go flying off in different directions. Doesn't seem to slow it down much. And I'll turn on the shield. Whoosh, activate. All right. Blazing shield, activate. Uh, that is your turn. Uh, Medric is going, or sorry, uh, Medric's already gone. It's Gitano. I can go again. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's see. He's going to try. Um, right. He gave him that. So technically, I'm going to roll it as this. It's not actually this, but it's the broken sword. Uh, as he uh, leans down and seems to sweep up with the sword. Hitting, which is pretty good. Big uh, damn boot. <laughs> that's if he's unarmed. Uh, but it's the only weapon I happen to have. Uh, and okay. then immediately strikes downward uh, with... Uh, let's see. No, he strikes upward with that, uses the momentum to carry his, his lower foot upward, which is actually the big damn boot. Uh, strikes again. Wow. He's doing pretty well. Got to be careful for him. Uh, and then strikes once more as he carries through with the other foot. Uh, this time, once again, striking. Jeez. Okay. Uh, oh, that's that's Gaetano's... Oh, sorry. No, he cannot make the other two strikes, I think. Uh, no, he cannot. You see him attempt to do it, uh, but you see him kind of collapsing a little bit under his own his own uh, uh, exhaustion. As you realize, he has not slept, so nothing he has has re has become back. But he makes the moves anyway, and then kind of seems a little bit awkward at the end. Uh, let's see, that's Gitano. From around the corner, uh, Medric, you hear clanking up the hallway, another one of the small skeletons. Uh, which attempts to slash at V with a sword. Uh, that's a crit. Oh. Okay, well, that hits. Uh, nine piercing. So it slashes across your back. Kind of, You thought all the, the, the hacking and slashing was in front of you, but in fact, one more from behind. And it strikes again. Holy crap. Oh, fuck. Wow. Suddenly they can hit things. This is great. Um, sorry. I'm not meaning to glory in the, in the destruction of my play, players. Just as I've been having such terrible roles for a long time now, that getting two crits in a row is unbelievable. Especially because one of those crits was accompanied by a potential crit fail. So, uh, but yes, uh, as it kind of uh, slashes at your back, unawares, uh, you're caught, uh, and the thing sort of slashes twice. And you know, these things are skeletons. They have no vocal cords. They didn't really seem to have much attitude. But for a moment there, you could have swore it struck a pose. Um, well, it's going to strike a pose on the floor next time. Annie. Uh, hello. Um, I'm going to grab Vice. Um, right. And I would like to uh, I will use my steady aim. Okay. Uh, so that's my bonus action and my movement. Uh, and I will stab at Duder. All right. Stab at Duder. I will take that as the undead buzzer, because that's close enough. Uh, stab at the dude in front of me with advantage. Go. Uh, that is 22. That is a strike. Cool. Uh, so, 8, 9, 10 damage. Um, you find, however, that the piercing effect of the dagger has no effect. Because there's even nothing solid, even though it's magical, 
it's the, the the construct that it has it sort of just bends with whatever piercing it has uh, and okay. you've seen that particular uh, damage seems to be a problem now oh. I will say with a dagger normally just piercing damage I will allow you to slash with the dagger uh, but uh, in this case you've learned something okay uh, and um, sneak attack Uh, well, sneak attack is the same damage type as the original, so it'd still be piercing. Okay. Yep. Yeah. All right. Silas, you see this thing sort of, uh, Annie basically jabs entirely right directly into its rib cage, and its rib cage kind of moves out of the way. Or the, the, the point when the blade hits, hits a little bit of fragile bone, and the bone just sort of relaxes out of the way. Okay, uh, Silas is going to go move between Gaetano and it. Uh, actually, I mean, Gaetano really was right next to it. Um, it's going to shove Gaetano out of the way then. <laughs> okay. Um, make a make a, an athletics check with advantage, or acrobatics actually in this case. Unfortunately, in his current state, he's just not able to resist you. He's a little bit off balance anyway, and he stumbles back. Uh, because you shoved him out of the way, it doesn't provoke a, an attack of opportunity, too. So that's good. Nope. Uh, and then I am going to uh, booming staff it. Okay. Oh, wait a second. No, I'm going to hex it first. Yes. Aha. Uh, the pass without a trace goes away. It now okay. gets hexed, and then I smack it with the staff. Uh, hex is there a saving throw on hex? Nope. Okay. It's new for me, so it is strange that way. Gotcha. So I got a twenty-four to hit. That definitely hits. That's eight magical bludgeoning plus six thunder and six necrotic cripes. World maximum on that. Uh, so that's 20 damage, although probably it might not take necrotic. Uh, indeed, it does not seem to do as much damage as you expected it to do. Uh, so I need to add this up. Uh, Speaking of adding up, uh, when it got the crits, like the damage it reports is the damage I take, or do I have to double that? Um, it should be calculated in it, but I will just hover yeah, that, over. Yeah, that, that was already in it. Yeah, it should okay. be calculated in there already for those. Because they're they're yeah. Built. When it says yeah. seven plus three, seven's the base, and three is the crit. Um, actually, no. That is not correct. Um, if I hover over here, I can see that uh, uh, it actually adds a plus zero for no apparent reason. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because well, the original one would be d6 plus two, and then the critical uh, extra damage would be just the d6. Uh, Oh, okay. It's weirdly reported. I guess that's what that is. If you, if you hover above the seven, then it has the the math for the seven, and then the math for the three. Mm -hmm. Math for the ah, okay. All right, there. I was hovering over the seven, figuring that was going to be the double amount. Okay, nope, that's right then. Okay. So. Uh, okay. Yes. So, some aspects of the damage I did did less than expected. Right. Okay. Uh, that's my bonus, my move, and my attack. So that's that. All right. It's turn. Uh, let's see. What is it going to do? Mm hmm. 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 Um, the blades which had stopped and come to a rest inside of its stomach begin to spin up again. Uh, it seems to be ready and and waiting for uh, someone to come at it. Uh, that's its turn. Lowen once again taking full defensive. Medric, creatures on all sides, lots of. All right, ass face behind me is gonna get a hammer in the face. Okay, very likely. And then a shield in his face while on fire. <laughs> so twelve hit. Uh, shoot, I just skipped right. Uh, twelve misses. As you strike out, maybe a little bit off put by the stabs in the back. And the shield's a charisma attack, right? Uh, it should say on it. I don't remember offhand. 
All right, it's right here. Yeah. D -d -d. I'm probably looking right at it, but I don't see it. <laughs> um, so uh, it's a it's based on Dex, not strength. Okay. So the 19 probably hits. 19 hits. So it does 1d6 plus 2 fire damage plus your dex bonus. Poof. Seven nice. fire. Uh, and yes. Strikes it quite solidly. It's holding on, but you can see now that some of the internal bones are kind of hanging uselessly, uselessly from their threads internally. Uh, Gaetano, what is he going to be able to do? He can stand behind me. <laughs> he can cheer us on. Woo! That's not really his way. Um... He shoves me out of the way and kicks it. I mean, that's basically going to be it. He's going to try to. Um, although in his current state, he might not be able to. Let's see what happens. So uh, he's going to try to to kind of shove you to one side. Uh, you can make a, a strength or an athletics or acrobatics to try to not be shoved aside. No, I'll. Uh, I'm fine with it. Okay, so you guys are kind of trading off this one spot. <laughs> as he kind of moves in and uh this time uh once again trying with the uh the, the the trio but not actually no he knows he can't really do all three so he's just going to be swinging at the thing with the sword and natural unfortunately one. natural one oh uh, he drops the sword uh it kind of clatters unfortunately to the ground didn't like it anyway <laughs> Uh, so like, you kind of get back you're not in shape for this right now he's and got he more of, hp than i do <laughs> he stands he stands there kind of shakes it rings out his hands and then and then brings his hands up in a stance uh to hopefully be ready for the next strike the uh skeleton behind you uh medrick will once again try to make nasty work of your back oh he's facing me like face to face now and he misses nasty work of your face but he does get to strike twice. Both of them missing now that you're paying attention to him. Uh, Annie. This thing right in front of you now has started to spin up in power once more. You saw what happened last time it did that. Is that going to happen again? You're muted. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, that's all, all you missed, yeah. Uh, I'm going <laughs> to then slash with vice. Um, just normal. Okay. Uh, 23. Nice. 23 is a strike. Hey. Ooh, that's decent damage. Uh, so. There you go. Yeah. So, uh. four. <laughs> or, no, <laughs> if, it's, if it's slashing. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's it's actually piercing. Um, Wait, well, you, you said that I could use slashing with the dagger. Yep, yep. It just says piercing on the weapon because that's what the thing has. Yep, no, that's fine. That definitely hits. That definitely does damage. Make a dexterity saving throw as you come close to the blades. Cool. Well, so, uh, she'd still have sneak attack too, wouldn't she? Oh, um, yeah. No, because you didn't have advantage. Oh, no, she has allies nearby. Yep. Yeah. That's why I like rolling everything anyway, just because I don't forget to roll things later. Another 12. Awesome. Dang. Uh, yeah, you're able to kind of jam inward and kind of jam your, your jam vice into one the center of one of the, uh, the, the control points. And you can hear with satisfaction as you kind of hold the blade the right way. Ting, 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 ting. As some of the, kind of, the cables inside are broken. However, uh, in getting that close to it, uh, you have to make a dexterity saving throw. Take five slashing damage. 
as you find the blades are just in too many places at once to completely avoid. Um, you have any other actions? Give me two seconds. I'm thinking <laughs> of the wrong character in my brain, so I actually need to read things. Uh, bonus actions. Uh, I will uh, have give uh, Silas advantage on his next attack. Okay. Um, by trying to direct him to hit the mechanism that I just hit with whatever he's trying to do. All right, Silas, sure. you've been given instructions and help. Yep. Uh, this time I'm actually. Uh, no, that one with any. I'm just gonna try and dart in with the staff and smack it real hard. Okay. There's just enough sort of space in there to squeeze shoulder by shoulder with Gaetano and the others. Wow. wow. Critical. Hey. So um, that is twenty magical bludgeoning. Thirteen. Uh, no, thunder. it's already calculated in. Yes. Twelve plus eight is twenty. Uh, magical bludgeoning, then 13 mag uh, thunder damage, and if Necrotic is doing anything, 8. So it only dam it doubles the dice. Okay, yeah, I just want to make sure that that's yep. how that's calculated. Yep, those all dice. Okay. Um, wow, that's a pretty good hit. That's awfully close. Yes. All right. That is crazy. Uh, let's um, see what happens with. Oh wait, how much was that? Twenty what now? Twenty. Twenty magical bludgeoning, six. thirteen magical thunder, and then eight necrotic. If that does anything. Okay, the necrotic has no effect. Okay, uh, so thirty-four between the thunder and the bludgeoning. Woo. Uh, as it stands, uh, uh, whoops, wrong button. There we go. As it stands barely before you, uh, kind of <laughs> kind of swinging, and it's, it's it's now like where before it had intentionally separated itself to move around Medric. Now it's not quite so intentional. It's more like it's flailing in all directions. Um, but it is still active, at least for the moment. Yeah, and I need a dex save. Uh, I got a natural one on my dex save, so right. so you take I get five points of slashing damage. Ow. Uh, and what is that? Uh, and that's ah, yes. it for my turn. So here's the weird thing about the way that it works now. And there will be some, some, uh, some reactions once it's completed, but essentially during its turn, uh, it essentially occupies all of the spaces around it for a turn, as it basically splays out in all directions. Um, it's written as move, but essentially it's it's like it can just expand and cover its full movement, even if it's not moving anywhere. Uh, so uh, each of you make a dexterity saving throw. That'll include Gaetano, Medric, uh, Silas, and Annie. Uh, it's against a 14. 19. for Gaetano. Gaetano's dexterity save is good. But I have to use the lower because he's exhausted. Um, which means that, uh, let's see, uh, Medric and Gaetano take a full 14 slashing damage. Ow. Everybody else takes 7. Uh, as literally, it's it spins its blade out, blades out in all directions. However, um, due to the amount of damage it's taken, you kind of notice that uh, the mechanism that was inside that spun this up kind of tears itself to shreds. Uh, you get the feeling that it can no longer do that. Uh, that brings Is us. Medric around... still standing? Yeah, I got five hit points. I'm totally good. Yeah, he's, fine. he's the healer. He's fine. It's fine. Um, Lowen looks over with fright and fear and looks even more resolved to staying where he is and protecting the rear. Medric, you're up. 
Okay, I'll swing at the skeleton in front of me. Okay, better a skeleton in front of me than a frontal. Wait. Skeleton. Can I hit? Uh, eleven. Ooh. Yeah. Eleven does then not I'll hit. Get shield, which also misses. So I, I guess I just do nothing. Uh, ooh. Uh, yeah. Unfortunately, you're so rattled by the the blades that spun out and probably for the well, I guess for the second time this battle. Uh, kind of engulfed you in whirling uh, uh, sharpness uh, that you, uh, uh, yeah, you find yourself rattled. Um, as you guys are fighting this thing, you kind of get the impression that maybe one of its original intentions, because of the way it moved initially and because of the way it's built, is actually to clean the tunnels. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, Gitano. Gitano is going to try to boot. Uh, he's not in a great boot kind of mode. Uh, where is Big Damn Boot? Big Damn Boot connects. Uh, Big Damn Boot stomps, actually, uh, as he kind of... Uh, it's really... Oh, actually, yeah, it's a barefoot at this point, so it will cause him damage. Uh, not really, actually. Uh, but it is enough. The two hit points it had left, that was really close. Uh <laughs> Uh, cause it to literally just sort of explode into bits and pieces. Uh, each of you make a dexterity saving throw, actually, as the bits and pieces go flying in off in all directions. Oh, now I make it. <laughs> the funny. As all of you are kind of prepared for this thing to spring outward, the bits and pieces kind of clatter over you harmlessly. Um, that is Gaetano's turn, who looks quite satisfied. The skeleton's turn. Uh, doesn't seem to have any morale whatsoever, so isn't bothered by the fact that its comrade was just exploded. Um, but will attempt to stab. Uh, does 19 hit? For yeah, I Medric. got one hit point. Hmm. As it successfully cleaves hey. into Medric. Uh, and then eh, and then steps over Medric's body. Um, no, Medric's got one hit point. Oh, you've got one hit point. Yeah. Okay. I thought you had one hit point. That's when you went down. No. Well, no, he had five. Stab yeah, but you again. Yeah. And misses. Yay. <laughs> uh, that makes it, I believe, Med uh, Annie's turn. You're muted. <laughs> so, that guy is just one of the regular skeletons, so I will grab my bow. I mean, relative to... The other thing. Well, yes. the other thing that just died in front of me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I'll shoot it with with the bow. Eighteen. Eighteen hits. Perfect. Nice. Uh, and that's more, more than enough to uh, to hit that central core, sending the whole creature to kind of flop like a, a puppet whose strings have been cut. You pause for a moment. You don't hear any more clattering. At least not now. For the moment, combat is over. Silas looks at Medrick and says, we got to find a place to hide out for a minute. I get. I give myself 17 HP because of reasons. He blazes with fire for a second and then looks a lot better. Yeah. A little better. I mean, that was half of your hit points back, so... Wait, no, well, your maximum isn't right on the sheet, is it? It's 52 now. Yeah, no, it says 31 on my sheet, so that's clearly not right. You take a moment to breathe. What are you going to do in the meantime? While Medric does that, Silas is going to take a quick peek around the corner to see if he can find a nearby room. Okay, you got a branching hallway. Um, uh, looking down the, the two branches, uh, you're at kind of a V at the, at the point where you're at right there. Okay. Uh, does either of them seem to have a door down them? You don't see a door oh. along the, along the, the hallways, although you do see that this, uh, hallway turns and this hallway turns. Uh, I'll allow you to make a perception check. Okay. You do remember that the skeleton came from this direction. Okay. The, the latter one came in from there. The other two were already in this hallway. Yeah. 
However, the bigger one was standing right here. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, left or right, Annie? <laughs> no, uh, they're always asking her that. <laughs> I can't no. see. Technically, she's in charge. Uh -huh. uh, Whichever direction, there's no clattering. Yeah. Uh, I'm not hearing anything from either direction. Well, multiple things. The the sweeper thing seems to have come from there. So if its purpose is cleaning, I don't think another one will come from here. So let's go this way. Okay. You head up there. You see, indeed, a small hallway, and there is a door there. Leading to and I think to me, room. who cleans halls with knives? I don't know. It's stupid. <laughs> uh, so yeah, uh, Silas is gonna go. Actually, Silas will go listen at the door first. Okay. <laughs> Make a perception check. You'll try not barging in. Sixteen. You don't hear anything at the door. You do hear okay. the creaking and moaning of the entire space as it shifts around you. But the door doesn't seem to make any noise and doesn't seem to be any coming from behind it. Okay, I'll try to open it. It's in fact unlocked. Uh, inside uh, this small room, um, you see uh, what looks like. Oh, wait, which room is this? I got it numbered on my sheet, but then I realized that's not the same one. Uh, Oopsies. Yes, there we go. Uh, inside, you find what looks like uh, bits and pieces of metal. Um, looks like large cogs, pistons, spares for what was all around you. Some of them are broken, probably had been replaced. Some of them are very, very old, covered in cobwebs. Um, it looks like they're sort of piled and stacked. It's a storeroom. Mostly empty, however, which means that if this was full at one point, someone has had a lot of supplies used recently. Hmm. Well, here Again, he'll look back at Silas and Annie. Do we want to take a rest to get everyone back up, or do we want to keep going? There's no exit from this room. I'd be okay with the rest. What about you guys? As much as I want to get, get things done quickly, I think safely is also important. Okay. I think um, catching our breath here. Gitano uh, kind of looks at you, Annie. I'm sorry. I'm in no shape to really fight here, and these this quarters isn't doing me any good. If I, you said the pathway in was clear, then I might just want to take my chances and get the boy out of here. Let I'll us stay if I'll stay if you ask me. If you think it's safe. Uh, by all means, be careful when you get out, though, because there are dozens of, of the sea devils out there. And don't go near the tornado, water tornado thing. All right, that's unless amazing. you want to down really fast. I mean, that sounds like an interesting option, but probably a little more dangerous than I'm looking for. I'm sorry. I, I it took a lot out of me to be in that cage. It's understandable. If, uh, if I don't see you soon, I'll come back for you. I need to rest. Definitely. And, and you can see him now, like, fighting not to fall asleep on his feet. Medrick? Yep. Can you give him a warming guidance as they leave? Yes, I can. And... Is that technically uh, less a minute, so they don't have to use it immediately. Exactly. Lesser restoration. Would that remove exhaustion? No. No, you need a greater restoration for that. All right, I'll give him guidance and yeah, wish him well. Be careful. Um, he thanks you. Don't get yourself into too much trouble. Uh, I'll be coming for you as soon as I can. And we'll you try. can see him still torn as to whether he's going to leave or not. Um, but the the absolute exhaustion he's feeling kind of puts him in a, in a bad bad specific position even though he stomped the crap out of the last thing in the end uh could you rest uh in this room i mean i can stay but every second i'm here the more dangerous it is to get out if you just came in then 
maybe there's an opening. All right. Yeah, we've only been in maybe 10 minutes. So Rigolesta might still be getting... Yeah. Right. Them. Is that the water lady? Maybe I'll say water hi to her on my way out, too. Yep. Oh. Uh, stay safe. You too. And I'll see you at better times. Hopefully not while you're trapped underground again. Or un underwater again. <laughs> it's starting to get embarrassing. <laughs> It's starting to really get embarrassing, so I'm going to try to avoid that from now on. <laughs> um, and we will have him roll on his way out. Uh, survival. Uh, was a guidance, you said? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Oh. That's not good. We may have no. to rescue him on the way out. <laughs> it should he be falls kind of funny. All right. That's him leaving. You all hunker down in the room to uh, find a moment's peace, taking as much time uh, as you need. Yeah. Um, Silas uh, is... Hmm. Silas is going to look at the ring while he uh okay while he rest uh he's gonna do uh just the normal uh short rest focusing on it thing okay so um also hit dice yeah does that not hmm. i'm trying to remember how that one works because normally you can't but, tell what a magic item is unless you try to attune to it um yeah, well, basically, they said there's a couple of ways to do it. One is in, in the investigate spell, which we don't have. The other one is if you keep it with you for an hour and focus on it, uh, then basically you know uh, you know what it does and how to use it. Uh, effectively, the same thing you do with the tuning. Okay. Um, so we might as well go ahead, if you're going to do uh, um, a short rest, that does take an hour. Keep that in mind. Yeah. Um, and roll your hit dice. I will tell you that the double banded uh, ring, that's the one you're looking at. Yeah. Um, as you focus on it, uh, writing seems to appear on its surface. Uh, and you start to understand its meaning. You've heard of such things before, but they are extraordinarily rare. It is a ring of spell storing. Nice. Ooh. You know that within this ring is probably some remnants of the spells that didn't save the person who was wearing it last time, but also you can put a spell into this. And do I know if it has any spells in it already? Um, you will not know that unless you attune to it. So it would require another hour. Okay, then I'll pocket it then. Basically, that entire time is spent just getting to know it, studying it, feeling its magic, and then with the spell or with the the friendliness essentially of the of the ring, uh, you are able to tell what it can do, but without actually att sure. attuning to it. So, um, if you've rolled your hit dice now, I will yep. go ahead and say that the hour will pass without any danger. Um, however, the room does shift and move as it feels like the entire space itself moves. And that's where we'll pick yeah. up next time. Silas will tell him that he thinks the building is moving, so maybe we're like a flying headquarters or something. Floating headquarters? Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I said I thought that the place was, was moving based on the yeah the stairs and things but yeah up to this point it had only shuddered now it feels as though it lurches about five feet does it feel like it's lurching five feet up or five feet like horizontally it's it's kind of like it moves in a semicircle um, almost as though it's kind of like you, you took you know take your chair you're sitting in it and it kind of makes a, a sort of semicircle movement 
jerking kind of upwards into the side, shaking. Hmm. It's almost like it's a giant creature. Yeah, so long as we're not resting in the stomach. Like the Maybe last it's one. giant undead. So oh, could I take could I take uh, just before we quit, could Silas have had like a couple of minutes to look at that casing? Or would that be too much time? Um sorry, which uh, casing? The mechanism from the skeleton's chest. Oh, you could you could turn it over a few times. It's like the other one, it is also sealed. Um, so it was not really broken apart. You can take take some time to kind of try to break it open, essentially. You don't have the tools yeah. necessary to, to kind of do it gently. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you break it open, and um, it has a similar nature to both uh, what you had noticed of the, uh, the, the mouse uh, and of some of the other things. What you notice, however, is that there's a much more delicate uh, carving of symbols on the inside. Um, they were done with knowledge, with precision, with care, and with uh, um, apparently whatever tools were necessary. Mm. Does it look like it's someone with greater expertise than who made the rat, or just as the rat a simpler, quicker thing? The rat appears, by comparison, to have been made like a toddler, just judging by the the the, the complexity of the symbols inside. So is this more like the the Stormbringer? Uh, yes. Okay. Stormbringer was a, a less complicated device, but a more powerful one. Um, this one is much more complicated, but not as much power. There's a lot more sophistication in what's being put inside, um, but it, the the everything about the inside is kind of in miniature. I'll tell them that it's like, yeah, this the mechanisms in these undead in here. I think they were made by the same person that made Stormbringer. Now, I don't know if that means that they're from a long, long time ago and, uh, shoot, Terras, Talus? Terras? Yeah, if he made them a long time ago and they've been reactivated, or if Clockwinder is making them. When you say the name Terras out loud. Uh oh all the mechanisms in the walls start moving. They shift and they adjust, revealing small orbs of magic-infused gems that appear very much like eyes looking at you from each of the walls. You get, the sense, you get the sense of being watched. I, I didn't even say his full name. That's where mm. we're going to end for tonight. Yep. Congratulations, yeah. guys. You beat uh, the undead buzzer. Uh, it was the only name I could come up with at the time, but that's that's kind of what it is. Uh, it is nasty. It was meant to be nasty. Yeah. And, uh, great even though, like, the regular old, like, shitty skeleton did more damage to me than the buzzer. <laughs> <laughs> Beware of skeletons bearing grudges, I guess. Um this will go up as a video on YouTube, youtube.com slash ENCAF1. With any luck, uh, hopefully a lot more smooth than previous videos have been. You've noticed some technical issues there that I'm still trying to iron out. Uh, you can also catch us live on Sundays at 3 o'clock. That's 3 o'clock Atlantic time. And uh, now uh, you can also, sorry, also find us on facebook.com slash LOTDI for watchers of the Drowned Isles. And now we've joined the Crucible Gaming Network, a local network of gamers. We decided we can work better together. So we're now one big party, and we're rolling all the natural 20s. <laughs> That's at cruciblegaming.ca. Thanks to my players once again. Thanks and to I the DM. Thanks for listening. Didn't mean to sound like I was fishing there, but I kind of was. Uh, that's okay. Uh, thanks again. I didn't say that to you off the air. <laughs> yeah, thanks have for a, creating the world <laughs> have a great uh, have a great week folks and we will return to the next part of this dangerous journey next week <laughs>